Hi, how's everyone doing? Um, I think today just might be the finale of this game. Well, at least the first game. So let me... I gotta turn my headset up a bit. Alright, there we go. Hope everyone's having a good day so far. Oh, I almost forgot to... Alright, final day. Let's see if we can push through it or we have to go to Tuesday. This is a defendant lobby, alright, but there's no defendant. We're trying to reach Lana, reach Lana all morning. Where could she be? And where's Emma, for that matter? It almost seems as if something's been happening behind the scenes. That's worth. Now you, you've already figured it out. Who the owner of the seven ID number is? That is. Oh, I have a pretty strong hunch. Looks like I'm not the only one who's figured it out. You know, the only reason this trial didn't reach a verdict yesterday is because there was still room for doubt regarding this ID record. If that number does belong to whom you expect, then no doubt will remain. After all, he hasn't been officially charged with anything. True. Not yet. In any event, once all doubt has been removed from that list, I, call, I can call for a ruling. Five minutes, right? She prosecuted this guy will be found guilty. But she didn't do it. I figured you'd say as much. That's why I came here, to hear what you have to say. It's the first time he's ever done something like this. I was hiding something, and the only way we'll ever know the truth is to draw it out of her. The truth? Everything goes back to the SL9 incident. Bulge, how's it going, Sphix? Don't be stupid, today's the last day of the trial. We don't have time to reminisce about the past. That depends on you. If she's found guilty, you'll lose your only chance to find out what really happened. So far, you're the only one who's spoken in chat, so... <laughs> I'll think about it. See you in court, right? This is it. It's going good, had pizza? Hell yeah. I had some baked chicken and like a nice Greek salad with extra feta because feta cheese is fucking banger. Still hate old people though? Yeah, yeah, I know. If I'm ever gonna find out what Chief Gant has on her, it's now. Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Lanisky. Defense is ready, Your Honor. Prosecution is ready, Your Honor. Only this is when the prosecution puts forth its opening statement. Before that, the police chief has a proposal to make. Uh oh. From now on, gargling will provoke un if unpresented rage. From now on, gargling. What? Who's gargling? Morning, folks. How's everyone doing? Hey, Aji, been back to the pool yet? Now I've been drowning enough as it is in my work. Oh, that's a good one. Don't think I can top that. My brand is bad today? Oh, like the big D or? Oh, it's my proposal, whatever. Lana, that is to say, the defendant has asked me if she could speak directly to the court. She wants to do what? My grandmother is gargling and yelling. Oh, I see, okay. Just a moron today. You're not a moron. Having heard what she intends to say, I feel that she should be granted her request. In the end, it should save everyone a lot of time and trouble. Oh, no. What's this all about, Defendant? 
I said today, no, I'm st regardless. And e even today, even tomorrow, even the next day after, you're still not a moron. Catch. <laughs> I'm trying my hardest to defend you, bud. You're not making it easy. <laughs> I'd like to make one simple request, and I'll be finished. Well then, what's your request? Your Honor, I'd like to put an immediate end to this trial. Huh? I confess to all charges against me. On February 21st of this year, I murdered Detective Bruce Goodman. In the underground parking lot of the prosecutor's office. No, Lana! Fucking... Ugh. You can't. Your Honor, the defendant's claim does not change the defense's plea. In that case, Mr. Wright, I no longer require your services. But Lana... Come on. Your Honor, I hereby forfeit my right to an attorney. Prosecution may uh, lack direct evidence against me, but it has sufficiently proven its case through testimony and circumstantial evidence. I would like you to render your verdict now, if you please. Hmm. Well, the defendant certainly has the right to self-representation. A request is legally valid, although this is an unpre unprecedented situation. I'll make fucking stabbing myself. It did appears there is no further need to continue this trial. Even if Mr. Wright might feel otherwise. This can't be happening. I thought she turned into a log. Joke's on you. I'm a log woman now. <laughs> it appears the time for the verdict has arrived. This court finds a defendant. And let me guess, objection. One moment, Your Honor. Oh. Edgeworth. M Mr. Edgeworth. Prosecution has not yet proven the defendant guilty beyond reasonable doubt. Any ruling at this stage would be certainly would certainly be premature. Come now, Worthy. I understand this is a difficult time for you, but why don't you just be a good little boy and keep your mouth shut, hmm? Thanks, Edgeworth. You a homie. Hmm. I don't think I care for your tone, Chief Gant. What? Creating another fabrication to cover up your past mistakes. Sorry, but I'm no longer the naive little boy you thought you'd, ha you'd have me be. With a sudden confession from the defendant, it's obvious to me some kind of deal was struck behind the scenes. Some kind of deal, hmm? Not everyone ap operates as you do, Worthy. <laughs> Each Chief Gant. Hmm. I thought so. Your Honor, the prosecution would like to change its first witness. Oh, to whom? As its first witness, the prosecution would like to, ch to call Miss Emma Sky. Oh. I request the court hears her testimony. Mr. Edgeworth, I'm exercising my right to self-representation. I don't think we need to continue. I don't care what you think, Miss Sky. Shit, dude. The exposure of truth sometimes results in tragedy. However, no matter how tragic the truth may be, it would be an even greater tragedy to avert one's eyes from it. Very well, the court shall grant the prosecution's request. That's okay with you, right, Chief Gant? Worthy, you'll live to regret this. Mark my words. Miss Emma Sky, please take the stand. Looks like Edgeworth has decided to take the horse by the reins. And the reins by the horse. <laughs> now then, witness, please state your name and occupation. Um, my name is Emma, Emma Sky. My occupation? I'm Lana's little sister, and I want to be a scientific investigator. Two years ago. This case still has, has a, still a lot to do. Uh, okay, well, we'll, let's, we'll try to power through it. You counted the serial killer Joe Dark of the Joe Dark killings. Is this correct? Yes. I'm trying my hardest to forget about that, though. I'm sorry. But I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to recall these events one more time. Mr. Edgeworth, please remember this trial concerns the murder of Detective Goodman. Is an incident that was resolved two years ago really all that relevant? Yes. It most certainly is. Well, okay then. Thanks, Judge. He sure gave in fast. Now, 
Please testify about what happened to you two years ago. The trip to yesteryear has finally begun. It's bound to lead to the truth behind this trial. We're gonna dump fuck our way through? Hell yeah. I should just get like a new hoodie on on my merch store that just says I dumb fucked my way through life and all I got was this hoodie. I was waiting in my sister's office that day. A man came running in and took me hostage. Neil Marshall rescued me. But I'll never forget what I saw in that instance. The man raised up his knife and stabbed Mr. Marshall in the chest. Yesterday, I wanted the English eradicated. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good thing you weren't harmed. I passed out. I don't remember much. That's understandable. However, please tell me, Mr. Edgeworth. What does this testimony have to do with Detective Goodman's murder? That will soon become apparent, Your Honor. You've got to admire him for his courage, considering he has no evidence. Very well. The defense may begin its cross-examination. In my sister's office that day. Two years ago, the defendant was a detective at the police department, correct? Yes. She was second command under the deputy chief of police, Gant. My sister, she was the best detective ever. Yes, I remember. Deputy Chief Gant and Miss Sky used to be quite the pair. I believe they shared the same office. That's right. I'd always sit at my sister's desk. I dream about playing that organ. Objection, I'm a clown. <laughs> I want to play that day too. The police department and the prosecutor's office held a ceremony that day. Anna promised to take me to dinner after she finished her work. I gotta take a quick swig. Man came running in and took me hostage. Man? A uh, man? Yes, Joe Dark. He was a, a serial killer. Joe Dark was brought in for questioning on the day of the ceremony. Man. Hey, Sawyer, how's it going? Joe Dark was brought in for questioning on the day of that ceremony. We were desperate to get anything on them that would lead to an arrest. When he saw his chance, he fled the room, right? Upon fleeing the room, Dark proceeded to take the elevator. He must have been in a panic because the elevator was going up. Then he ran into Sky and Gant's office. There was a lot of noise coming from outside, so I, I opened up the door to have a look. That's when I saw him. I found I'm doing all right. Ordering food? Hell yeah, yeah, well, uh, and I agree it was fixed. What you get? Neil Marshall rescued me. What was the prosecutor doing there? That day, there were two people present during Dark's questioning. The PG team in Gant and Prosecutor Neil Marshall. Hopefully, pizza and jalapeno poppers. Oh, fucking jalapeno poppers are banger. All situational? Oh, let's hope so. Rage. Almost forgot about Gantz. Neil Marshall had just received the, uh, the King of Prosecutors Award. Yana dedicated, he went to the questioning room, room after the ceremony. I would assume that's why he was also the first to run after Dark. When Dark grabbed me, I, I thought I was as good as dead. Same fix. Well, if if you, you got the problem is you got to have like a, a decently flavored uh, cream cheese and a nice uh, like coating, either either like some sort of dough or uh, like battering. I prefer battering just because it's it's flakier and tastes nicer. Doesn't well doesn't nearly as much moisture making it soggy. That's when Prosecutor Marshall came running in. 
I don't clearly remember what happened then. But I'll never forget what I saw in that instance. The man. Oh. Forgot how good a homemade pizza dough is. I, I try, but it always ends up like dense. I can never get like yeast to rise properly. I ate like a third of a pizza on my own. Hell yeah! I forgot what I saw in that instance. Can you tell us about that? Mr. Marshall jumped on dark. Then the lights went out. The lights. It was just about this time of year. There's a terrible storm going on and lightning struck nearby. So the electricity went out. Wait a minute. It was pitch dark in that room. Shouldn't have been able to see anything, right? Right, but just then lightning flashed again outside. A sudden flash left an unforgettable image of the scene in my mind. I see. I told the detective about what I saw then. The detective? Yes, Detective Goodman. He was in charge of the case. Detective Bruce Goodman, the victim. Anymore. So you just spoke with Detective Goodman about this two years ago? Yes. That's what's so scary about this trial. You have to tell Detective Goodman about what you saw. Yes, but... At the time, the word just wouldn't come out. That's why I drew a picture. A picture? Yes, I think she mentioned that before. Anyways, Fix, I forgot to ask, what kind of pizza? This picture the witness drew. I believe it has a very important meaning. The list of evidence I was given two years ago didn't contain a picture. Witness, would you mind if we added a statement to your testimony? Yes, Your Honor. I drew a picture of that scene once, but it seems to have been lost. I'm not even going to press this because I know exactly which one it is. Objection! Mr. Edgeworth. This little girl put all her heart into drawing that picture. And yet you would insist on denying its evidence. Existence. Pretty basic ham and salami? Not bad. I, I, I'm, I personally find salami to be a little bit dry for pizza. But, I mean, you, you, whatever floats your boat. <laughs> hey, I'm not the bad guy. All I'm saying is that as a prosecutor for that case, I wasn't handed such a picture. That may well be. But that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Behold. This is the evidence list for the SL9 incident. Please turn it over, Your Honor. Turn it over. Turn it. Ah! What's this? Yes, what is that? Hey, that's it. That's the picture I drew. <laughs> Behold a man. Indeed, two men appear to be wrestling here. What's the meaning of this? What are you doing with that list? Me? Only the prosecutor in charge should have access to that list. Huh? These lists, they're... They're different from each other. They're out of fucking pizza dough? No! Ah, oh, shit. I'm sorry, man. I know you're looking forward to that. What? It would appear, Mr. Edgeworth, that the evidence list you were handed two years ago was incomplete. These two lists fit together to form one. You can see the marks here where they were torn apart from each other. So you see, Mr. Edgeworth, it's quite obvious what happened. Two years ago, only half of the evidence in that case ever reached you. But they have jalapeno poppers and chicken wings and I got a beef dip. Nice. Sounds like a good, a good time. What? What? <laughs> Order, order. But Miss Sky, why did you draw your picture on the back of such an important list? Because that's what Detective Goodman handed me in the questioning room, Your Honor. Wait a minute. This list was torn in half. Then that means... 
Your Honor. Are you all right? Are you all right, Mr. Wright? Your eyes are bulging from your head. If the Evelyn's list was torn in half, then there might be more of the drawing in the back of Mr. Edgeworth's list. Yes, that's quite conceivable, Mr. Edgeworth. It's possible. Let's see. Hmm. <laughs> Kaka. There's something wrong. Do you even have to ask? Sorry, Your Honor. There is indeed something drawn in the back of my list. Is that... Is that thing? Oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's that... That thing. <laughs> the fucking stroke and died. <laughs> that thing that was dancing in the evidence room. Clearly, this act of vandalism is the work of a certain chief of detectives. I guess he was out of scrap paper. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, I know, I'm sorry. Very well, witness. Will you please testify about this picture you drew two years ago? Huh? Oh, yes, sir. Your Honor. What's wrong with Emma? She seemed to be thinking about something when she was looking at the picture. This is the picture I drew two years ago. The flash of lightning was so bright all I could see were shadows. After that I must have fainted. This picture shows exactly what I saw in that instant. To think a flash of lightning could burn such an image in your mind. Thanks to that, though, she was able to show us exactly what she saw. Well, I don't see any contradictions here. This clearly shows Do Joe Dark about to murder Prosecutor Neil Marshall. The thanks me and Abby begin its cross-examination. This picture I drew two years ago. Did you draw this picture right after the incident? Um... Oh, why do I have a fucking itch in my nose? Man, I want noodles. Uh, make noodles? I think I drew it two or three days later. At first I was in such a state of shock that I couldn't do anything. During that time, the investigation team was reorganized. Detective Goodman was placed in charge, under the direction of Damon Gant to line a sky. Two or three days later, Remy should have still been fresh in her mind. Excuse me, witness. But can you please tell us why this picture is painted all black? The flash of lightning was so bright all I could see were shadows. We don't have noodles? Oh. Uh, if there was a way to make your own, I would I would tell you how to, but I really don't know how to make your own noodles. So at the time you didn't even know it was Mr. Marshall who came to your rescue. No. I couldn't see him clearly. The lightning was so bright, and I was knocked to the floor. You were knocked to the floor? Dark had a tight grip on me, but when Marshall jumped on him, I was knocked away. I turned around, and that's when the lightning flashed. Poor Emma. I'm just glad she wasn't hurt. What happened after the lightning flashed? And then I must have fainted. You mean you didn't see the actual murder take place? No. I'm sorry. The flash of lightning only drove off the darkness for a split second. Not only that, but the trauma of the situation understandably caused the witness to faint. Do you really need to torture this girl any further? What? Hey, I'm not the bad guy here. Anyway, this picture. This picture shows what exactly what I saw in that instance. This seems more and more sus. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry for asking so many times, but are you sure you drew exactly what you saw? Of course. This is the exact scene. 
It wasn't influenced in any way from your talks with the detectives. Are you insinuating we somehow manipulated her memory, Mr. Wright? No, no, of course not. I better watch out or you might find some way to cut my salary. I knew this picture before I heard anything from the detectives. So I don't think anyone's story would have influenced me. Mr. Wright. Is there something that's bothering you about this picture? Huh? Oh, well. That's strange. She claims this is exactly the scene that was imprinted in her mind. And yet... There's clearly a contradiction here. Hmm. Welcome to Ace Attorney, the man we defended from murder charges bickering with us in court. <laughs> I knew it was fucking wrong. Your Honor, the statement contradicts his evidence. It does? I don't see anything contradictory. Not really. Objection overruled. Try to think before you make accusations. Fuck. Whoops, there it goes. Well. Yeah, okay, so he's stabbed in the back, not the front. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but this picture the witness drew contains a blatant contradiction. What? But I still remember it like it was just yesterday. Mr. Wright, perhaps it would be faster if you just simply pointed out this contradiction for us. One part of this picture contradicts the autopsy report. I think it's, uh, this part here? Hmm, I don't see- okay, fuck. That's because the drawing stinks, okay. Mr. Wright, how could you? Oh. The act of making innocent girl cry should warrant the death penalty. Thanks, Edgeworth. <laughs> I guess he means it shouldn't be blame. As long as defense has learned a lesson. Is it the knife? Contradiction, of course, lies here. Take a look at the knife this man is holding. If you look closely, you can see the tip is broken. I don't even have to look closely to see that, Mr. Wright. Or Mr. Wright, look at the evidence. See the murder weapon? Its tip is broken, too. If I recall, the tip of the knife was found broken off in the victim's body. It was a conclusive piece of evidence that provoked Joe, uh, Joe Dark was the murderer. I'm afraid it's not so simple, Emma. And where, pray tell, would you, could you possibly see a problem? It's obvious, really. The victim suffered a single stab wound to the back. If the victim was only stabbed once. Then the murder weapon should not yet be broken. Brain. Ah! What's the meaning of this? Perhaps the knife was broken beforehand. So I'm afraid that's not possible. Except the knife was found inside the victim's body. If it was broken beforehand, it couldn't have possibly wind up there. That's right, but what does this mean? Except the knife was undeniably discovered within the victim's body. The only possible explanation is as the witness's m memory is mistaken. That's why I asked her so many times if she was sure she remembered correctly. 
I believe you were annoyed at the time. <laughs> but she was sure she remembered correctly. But there's no other, other other way to explain this inconsistency. Mom and dad are fighting. <laughs> Daddy! Daddy! No! Not so fast, Mr. Edgeworth. There is another explanation. Have you forgotten already? A little something called falsified evidence. You're treading on thin ice, right? All I'm saying is that this broken knife tip might be the piece of evidence that was forged. You can't deny the possibility. No. Ah. Order, order, order. I say the investigation was really corrupted. Your Honor. Please allow me to once again go over the evidence that took place on the day of the murder. The police Department and the Prosecutor's Office were holding a ceremony that day. After receiving the King of Prosecutors Award at the ceremony, Neil Marshall questioned Joe Dark with, along with Damon Gant. During his questioning, Joe Dark fled the room. Prosecutor Marshall chased after him and was killed by Dark. It is my belief that somewhere in this story, there is a lie. I... I'm not lying. The man was really holding up a broken knife. If that's true, then there's no other way around it. This could not have been the actual murder weapon. There must have been another broken knife. What are the chances of there being two broken knives? Another broken knife besides Joe Dark. Could there have been one? If the witness is this adamant about the accuracy of what she saw, then it can't just be explained away by a simple observational error. Mr. Wright. And then it's, Emma really did see a broken knife. I assume then, that you have some information about this other broken knife. If so, please feel free to enlighten us. The murder weapon was already broken prior to the murder. There's only one way. Take a look at this. Here's a real, real murder weapon. Oh. It is my badge. My badge killed everybody. <laughs> but anything is broken here. It's you. Huh? I'm sure this must be very meaningful. Okay, fuck. The answer lies in the past. Two years in the past. Right here inside this picture. It is the sword. Or halberd, I guess. This is a picture of the Serp Wards of Mary. Ah! What is it, Mr. Edgeworth? It's the broken murder weapon. Notice the award Prosecutor Marshall is holding. That's a broken knife. As we earlier concluded, the knife in the drawing was not Joe Dark's knife. That being the case, the knife the witness saw was in all likelihood from this award. Order, order, order. The young marshal was awarded King of Prosecutors that day. As an award, he was given his broken shield and knife. When he chased after uh, Joe Dark, he pulled out his knife. The King of Prosecutor did not carry a pistol. His broken knife was the only weapon he had in this dangerous situation. But that, that can't be. Oh, and why not, Mr. Edgeworth? He's like a King of Prosecutors award knife was the murder weapon. Then the murderer and the victim would be reversed. What do you mean? I mean... This man raising a knife could have been Prosecutor Neil Marshall. Oh. Oh! But the Prosecutor was the one who actually died. That's true. What's going on here? It seems Mr. Wright has been a bit too eager to jump to conclusions. Wait, I remember now. I remember everything. Witness. Mr. Edgeworth. What is it? Could you show me your evidence list again, please? His list. 
Oh, that picture scribbled on the back. I knew it. This picture. I'm the one who drew it. What? You drew that. That's right. The list wasn't torn in half at the time I drew this picture. That time I've been trying so hard to forget. I must have locked this part away deep inside me. Perhaps it would be best if we added this to the witness's testimony. Would you please tell us what you recalled, Miss Sky? Yes, Your Honor. First knife mix-up and now the blue badger? This should be interesting. Sorry, I itch. When I saw that man raise his knife, I panicked and rushed towards both of them. I think I knocked away the man with the knife. Just then there was another flash of lightning, and that's when I saw the blue badger. He wasn't to the room, but I'm sure I'm, I'm sure I saw a shadow. This is certainly most unusual. Objection! Try impossible. Cheetah detectives hadn't even designed him until this year. That would mean he didn't even exist two years ago. Yes, well, the defense may now begin its cross-examination. Stop, please. Don't pursue this any further. What the fuck? Lana. What's the meaning of this? Please remain seated in the defendant's chair. But you can't do this. I've already confessed to the crime. Why can't you just leave it at that? The chief prosecutor's guy. We've already come to this far. It's too late to turn back. Welcome to shit gets, is going to get real wacky. Okay. Silence. The defense will now begin its cross-examination. Bailiff, please deten detain the defendant. It seems we're finally getting to the core of the matter. That was recollection. Saw that man raise his knife. When you say that man, I assume you refer to Joe Dark? Yes, at least I think it was him. You think? All I could really see were shadows. The power outage that immediately preceded the incident. It is also documented in the prosecutor's office reports. So then you... I panicked and rushed towards the both... Why would you do something so dangerous? What else, what else could I have done? He was about to stab Mr. Marshall. She seems convinced that Dark was the one holding the knife. But as we just theorized, Mr. Marshall was the one holding the knife. I didn't know that at the time. When that Dark guy got knocked me down, all I could think was, I've got to help that other person. I, I think I knocked away with the man with the knife. What do you mean you think? It, it all happened so fast, and I was in shock. I don't remember everything clearly. What I did, it's all kind of a blur. This guy was almost killed before before she was a wit was witness to a murder about to take place. With so much happening in a matter of seconds, a little disorientation is only natural. I saw the man about to stab the other person, who I thought was Mr. Marshall. I knew I had to stop the man with the knife. What you do is very brave, young girl. So then what happened next? Just then there was another flash lightning, and that's when I saw the blue badger. Are you sure about this? Of course. See? I even drew a picture of him there. But... It was the chief detectives who thought up this hideous beast. And that was just this year. Blue Badger didn't exist two years ago. This is quite verifiable. It says the man who that was convinced he murdered his father. Yeah. I know it sounds strange. I was surprised too when I saw him at the police department. I had this nagging feeling that I'd seen him before somewhere. Now I finally remember. No, brother. Just when he thought that thing had caused enough commotion. 
Tell us, what were you doing? Where, where in the room did you see him dancing? He wasn't in the room, but I sure him saw a shadow. Shadow. So you mean that you actually see his face with his morning smile at all? That's right, but I still remember it. It had three creepy horns. This is pointless. That thing couldn't have possibly existed two years ago. The witness must be mistaken. <laughs> the badger did it. We knew it. Holy shit. That may well be. But what's important is, uh, is what caused her to think she saw what she did. Oh, and I suppose you have an explanation? If so, then by all means, please tell us what the shadow really was. What was Emma saw when the lightning flashed? Who is this Blue Badger really? Blue Badger hadn't even been jumped up when Emma drew this picture. Yes, she certainly saw its shadow. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the defendant defense's belief that on that fateful day two years ago, there indeed was something that looked like similar to the Blue Badger. Something that is now sitting in this very room. Mr. Wright! In this room? Very well, Mr. Wright. What is it that the witness saw in that instant? Please show us this mysterious blue badger look like. Mysterious blue badger was, in fact, this. But that's, uh, what exactly is that? I believe it's some sort of jar. Urn. Boss. You should consider saving because I think the massive bitchy part is close. Okay. First off, uh, next next time say spoiler alert. Uh, but I I do I do appreciate that there is kind of like a, I guess a bottleneck as it were. But Mr. Wright, it doesn't look anything like the poop hatcher. Indeed, it doesn't. As it stands now, it's just a plain jar. However, what if we were to change our viewpoint? Our viewpoint. I've got to show them the correct angle to look at this from. Let me to the uh, defense of this this case hinges on the drawing. Just very annoying gameplay moments, awfully picky. Okay. Can't match the shape of witness tree, we can accept this claim. Fucker. There we go. <laughs> the cut is that moment, yeah. Well, is this a miracle or what? No one can possibly deny this jar's resemblance to the blue badger. No. It can't be. Order, order. 
The defense has proven its claim. The mysterious blue badger witnessed on the day of the crime was actually this. Objection! Although we enjoyed Mr. Wright's dramatic performance, one question remains. What's your point? What do you mean? So that badger thing was actually just a job. Doesn't change anything. I'm afraid that's where you're wrong, Mr. Edgeworth. You see, this changes everything. Indeed, very well then. Please tell us. What's different what's different now that we know where the witness saw this jar? Allow me to take these in turn. At the moment of the murder, the witness saw this jar. At a very specific angle, I might add, Mr. Wright. Yes, while well, knowing this, where could she have seen this jar? Where? The location of the jar is shown in a picture taken on the day of the crime. On a shelf in the office of Damon Gantz. Well, the body was found near, uh, lying near Lana Sky's desk. The witness testified how so herself. Objection. Yes. As these two facts that uh, reveal what actually transpired. You see. The struggle between Dark and Marshall did not take place in Lana Sky's office. It happened on the other side of the room, in Chief Gant's office. Objection. Are you implying the murderer removed the victim's body? From Damon Gant's office to Lana Sky's office. Yes. Why would he do that? There's no reason. Exactly. If there wasn't a reason, he wouldn't have gone through the trouble. The logical conclusion is that there, there was a reason. Do you know what that reason was, Mr. Wright? He finally figured it out. So this is why Lana tried to stop the trial. It's too late to quit now, though. Please recall the witness's testimony. She said she knocked away the man who was holding up the knife. In the next instant, the jar was hit and flew through the air. Now tell me, what could have sent the jar flying? That would have to have been the impact the man made when he was knocked into the wall. Ladies and gentlemen, if I may draw your attention to this picture once more. If the man was, man was knocked into the direction of the shelf that the jar was sitting on, what would he have hit? Oh shit. The suit of armor. Holding a very sharp and dangerous looking sword. Yes. Since the man who was knocked into the armor was carrying a broken knife, he would have had to have been Neil Marshall, wielding the King of Prosecutors trophy. No, Mr. Wright, you can't be thinking. Yes. Oh no, did we just throw Emma onto the bus? There's another possibility of what actually transpired in that room. Another possibility. Of course, the perpetrator would have had no idea, but nevertheless. I I don't know if I can go through with this. <laughs> Again, nay, nay, nerd. I, I, I read that as get nerd, nerd, nerd. <laughs> Mr. Wright, what's the matter? Events took place as the defense theorizes, but the outcome is obvious. In that moment, assuming the man Emma Sky knocked away was actually Prosecutor Neil Marshall. Shit. You mean, Mr. Marshall died because of me? Prosecutor Kebab. <laughs> Holy fuck, dude, the bartenders at the pub are so cute but so fucking dumb. First of all, nice. Secondly, how, in what way? what they do to your order? Fuck, there goes my phone.
Fucking my leg is itchy. They didn't understand what tab is. Okay. I never imagined her testimony would lead to this. Wait, so are you just watching us at the, or like watching the stream at the bar? Or at the pub or whatever? I never imagined her testimony would lead to this. So it was the witness who took the victim's life. And then proved so with her own testimony. This is unprecedented. It's me and the owner are best buds. I can put my $60 lunches on a tab. On tab and then pay for it on payday. Well, that's good. No, I'm at work? Oh, okay. Oh, I ordered a lunch for the pub? Okay, that makes sense. What? What are you saying? I'm sorry, Miss Sky. But given the circumstances, Joe Dark murdered Pro Prosecutor Marshall. How can you think it was Emma? How dare you try to pin the crime on her? Imagine that coming from you. If you recall, it was you who admitted to forging evidence two years ago. The reason you moved Prosecutor Marshall's body was to keep anyone else from finding about what Emma did, wasn't it? Lily called the owner and he had to explain what a tab was to them. Ha! Huh. Well, I mean, at least they're smarter now. They went red as a beat, though. <laughs> or they at least. Uh, actually, I shouldn't say that. Never mind. I assure you, Mr. Edgeworth, I have no idea what you're talking about. If you, have, if you hope to have anyone believe in your insane allegations, I'm afraid you're going to have to have proof. Tell me. Do you have any conclusive evidence that proves my sister killed Neil Marshall? Uh, evidence. The pros made a cutie blush, cons public humiliation. <laughs> exactly. I'm willing to bet that you don't. Yes. It certainly would be difficult to prove this with evidence. If we don't have evidence, then we'll have to rely on testimony. I'm afraid that won't work in this case. Both parties involved in the incident are dead. Certainly can't get dead people to testify. It's all been a wild goose chase from the beginning. The log. <laughs> I got my food. Hell yeah. Touche, Miss Sky. Of course, that only leaves us with one possibility. I mean, there's still another possibility. What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? I mean, the possibility that the victim has left us a message. For better or worse, Mr. Marshall did not die instantly. He may have left behind the name of the person who took his life. In one matter or another. Th that's that's impossible. Well, Mr. Wright, this is the only possibility left to you. A message from the deceased. Does such a message exist? You gotta think back to the court record. The real murderer's name that the victim may have left behind... Oh, I don't... I feel totally bad about screwing Emma like this, but I... <sighs> this message from the seas is already in a position. Mr. Wright, will you stop at nothing to prove my sister a murderer? Do not be mistaken, Miss Skye. Our purpose is not to accuse um, Emma of any crime. There is only one thing we wish to seek. The truth. Students have no rights, don't feel bad. Source, am student. No matter how painful it may be. Now then, Mr. Wright. Please show us the piece of evidence that conveys a message from the deceased. This message left by the deceased. This is that blue badger from before, right? Oh, is he going to just speak the killer's name? Yes.
It was Edgeworth, motherfuckers. <laughs> the piss east. <laughs> if, if, if that thing could, I'm sure it would. Looks like everyone's forgotten this is just a jar. A message was left here. On the surface of the jar. What do you mean? If you look closely, you can see a faint trail of blood on this jar. Looks like someone wiped the blood away. Yes, but notice. For some reason, blood on the fragments was not wiped away. Yes, there is a line here drawn in blood. That's so what you're saying is these dots were once lines. It <laughs> would cry in agony. Kill me! Kill me! Prosecutor Marshall did not die instantly. He used the free precious of his moment to leave behind a message. One that apparently, so, one that someone apparently wiped away. The blood must have seeped into the jar where the lines changed directions. Precisely so. All we need to do is connect these points. The victim's message will become apparent. No. Mr. Wright. What kind of message did the victim leave for us? Your Honor, I believe these bloodstains will reveal to us the answer. I'm going to connect these dots to make letters. There's only one thing the victim could have written in these circumstances. His murderer's name. defense attorney's duty to prove their client's innocence. That's why I've been thinking about is saving Lana. After all my efforts, I never thought it would turn out this like this. Emma. <laughs> Deus ex caca. <laughs> yeah, Emma's screwed. I feel... I, uh, am I leading towards a bad ending? So this is the final message Prosecutor Marshall left behind. Of all people. She may not have meant it, but in the end, the one who took the victim's life was Emma Sky. Remember crazy comes in all shapes and forms? Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's so terrible. See, worthy can't say I didn't warn you. Chief Gant. Do you understand the implications of what you've done? What? What are you talking about? Two years ago, Joe Dark was sentenced to death. He was convicted because of his final murder. I believe you were the prosecutor in the case, were you not? Ugh. Yes, worthy. Because of you. An innocent man was sentenced to death. Chief Bitch! Not only that, but use forged evidence to get to ensure his conviction. But Joe Dark was really what really was a serial murderer, that's undeniable. I'm afraid that's not important. Didn't you know? We aren't defenders of justice. What? We're merely keepers of the law. Sentencing a man to death is no light matter. Even if there wasn't any cover-up or evidence forgery. Ultimately, the responsibility falls on the prosecutor in charge. Despite what anyone might say, this fact cannot be denied. Imagine throwing out an offense, which is a federal offense. Yeah, yeah, I know, but this game does it quite a few times. 
What's going on at the prosecutor's office? They might have sent an innocent man to his death. How can he just stand there like it wasn't his fault? Order, order, order. Order! The gavel's pounding fell on deaf ears. Unable to settle the crowd, the judge declared a recess. Where this trial is headed, no one knows. Excuse me. Ba, 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 ba. Oh, nice. Welcome to the law. <laughs> Welcome to law and disorder, motherfucker. Dun dun. <laughs> Final day, trial ladder. This is where everything comes down to. Sorry, Edgeworth. I'm a defense attorney. <laughs> I don't know why I clicked that. Sorry, Edgeworth. I didn't mean to get you in trouble. Don't worry about it. This is my problem, not yours. Hope I'm not interrupting anything, pals. Gumshoe, that's, that's the fucking second time you've done this. Oh, guess I am. I'll come back later. Wait, Detective Gumshoe, what is it? <laughs> this is fucking nice. You've got a lot of nerve, pal. Make a detective run around while on duty. Top it off, you call me here. I've seen happier people at funerals. Take Atlanta's having you run errands again. Let me tell you, this is the last time, pal. Here, she asked me to give this to you if there was a break in today's trial. <laughs> Take my man. <laughs> Wait, no, that sounds wrong. <laughs> Evidence law. Okay. Evidence law? I was talking about this just the other day. You must know the two rules of evidence law. The one, no evidence shall be known without the approval of the police department. Is that right, Mr. Wright? It seems so. You can only study some evidence law, really. Chief prosecutors also want me to give you a message. A message? She said, if you're planning to take him on, you're going to need this book. Him. I guess I need to give this book a thorough read. Do I have it? Now I have it. <laughs> These nuts. Uh, no evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. Unregistered evidence presented must be relevant to the case on trial. No evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. Okay. Unregistered evidence must be present. All that's left now is the chief prosecutor's sentence. That's where you're wrong, detective. Huh? Haven't you figured it out yet? Why well, I'm still sitting at prosecutor's seat. Despite all these allegations being thrown at me. Mr. Edgeworth. The real trial today hasn't begun yet. What What else is there left to do? credibility has been all, all but ruined with this forged evidence you were unaware of. Emma Sky found out she was unwilli unwilling to cause a man's death. And now you're telling me you want to do more. You've got to be kidding me, pal. You're missing the point, detective. I need a drink. Lana didn't murder Detective Goodman. She merely stuck a knife into his dead body. That means the real killer is still out there. What? And we're going to expose him. No matter what it takes. This case has hurt too many people. It's time to bring it to an end. Go 
court will now reconvene for the trial of Miss Lana Skye. Mr. Edgeworth. Yes, Your Honor. The Inquiry Committee is planning to impose harsh penalties for your actions. Thank you for the news, Your Honor. Yes, well, ahem. Normally this is where the prosecution calls forth a witness. But, uh, ahem, cough, cough. This isn't easy to say. You see, there is some concern that you, Mr. Edgeworth, may have, uh, struck a bargain. You think I may have manipulated the witnesses? I didn't say that. It's just, you see, everyone has been talking, and... Very well, Your Honor. I have a solution. A solution. That being the case, the prosecution will allow the defense to call forth all further witnesses. Well, but there's no precedent for what you're proposing. Undeniably, this is an unusual arrangement. But a very effective one. It would prove that I haven't struck any deals with the witnesses. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you say? Unbelievable. Edgeworth has found a way to continue the trial. Very well, the defense accepts the prosecution's proposal. Just like me and your dad last night. I fucked your dad, I fucked your dad, I fucked your... Actually, funny enough, I... I, I I was bored day before yesterday, and I started writing a song about, you know, you know how, like, uh, your favorite Martian had, uh, doing your mom? Uh, I, uh, I, was, I was like, I fucked your dad, fucked your dad, fucked your dad. I, it, it's kind of sucks right now, but I'm just, <laughs> I to think it would be funny. Then it's settled. The, uh, defense may now call forth the next witness. Mr. Wright? You do realize this is your last chance. If you call the wrong witness, this trial is as good as over. Time's finally come to bring out the real murderer. Meekins! <laughs> Damon Gant. The defense calls Damon Gant to the stand. D Damon Gant? What does he have to do with anything? As a defendant's partner two years ago, Mr. Gant has first-hand knowledge of the crime. I feel like should we, if we should hear what he has to say about it. Huh. As luck would happen, he should still be in the courthouse. He would also be the least likely to have been manipulated by me in any way. Call Goodman. <laughs> Wouldn't you agree, Your Honor? <laughs> Piers, I've overestimated you, Mr. Wright. Huh? For a moment, I actually thought you knew what you were doing. <laughs> Mr. Wright, this guy has been long tired since tired of your questionable antics. <laughs> Alright, I, 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 I got it right the first time, so I'm gonna load it so I don't get a penalty. <laughs> I call this dead guy and just wheel his limp body and throw him on the witness stand. <laughs> well, Mr. Floppy, what do you have to say for that? I'll take it by your silence. You're fucking guilty. Damon Gant. The defense calls Damon Gant to the stand. Damon Gant? What does he have to do with anything? As a defense partner two years ago... Oh, I heard this. Wouldn't you agree, Your Honor? True. Alright, bailiff, please escort Mr. Gant to the stand. Witness, please state, state your name and occupation. What is this, some kind of practical joke? I was just on my way to lunch. Your name and occupation, sir. The dead guy wouldn't tell us. <laughs> <laughs> wow, 
Why does he have big bonkers? I don't know. Worthy. Are you sure you want to do this? Your name and occupation. So, you want to play hardball, eh? Please, Mr. Gantz. Fine. My name is Damon Gantz, and I'm the acting chief of police. Now then, Chief Gantz, the court requires to hear your testimony. Oh, right, oh, what's with the grim face? First, let's clear up this SL9 incident. I mean, that time when Lana's sister murdered that prosecutor? Personally, I think it made, it's been made pretty clear already. There are still some things unaccounted for. Oh, like what? Like the role you played in all of this. Son, you're either very brave or very foolish. You are, are aware, of course, that a police chief has all kinds of weapons at his disposal. Weapons? Sure, take my testimony, for example. I'd have to give it if I don't want to. What? Is that true? I'm afraid so. The chief of police has the right to refuse to testify. Of course, such an action carries with it certain risks. Don't worry, I'm not here to enter your trial. Now, just, just remember, if this turns out to be a big waste of time, don't say I didn't warn you. Very well, the witness may begin his, now may now begin his testimony. As I recall, Neil and I were questioning him that day. To make a long story short, we slipped up. That power outage didn't help either. When I went to my office, I found Lana there. Finally, she had already arranged the crime scene. As you can see, I had nothing to do with the forgery. Hmm. Is that when Dark was arrested? Him? He was lying on the floor unconscious. When Emma sent Neil flying, it seems Dark bumped his head. I see, everything seems pretty clear cut. The police chief has the right to refuse to testify. They better hit him hard and fast. You're fucking rail. <laughs> so recall Neil, question. As I recall, a ceremony was held at the police department that day. Yes, that's right. I guess you could say I'm a workaholic. Loving and winning his award, Neil was all fired up too. That's probably what spooked Dark and made him run away like that. Was the defendant Lana Sky also present to the room? I don't quite remember. At the very least, she wasn't there when Dark ran for it. To make a long story short, we slipped up. That power outage didn't help either. So the two of you uh, ran immediately after him, right? That's right, but Dark made it to the elevator first. So Neil and I split up. He went upstairs and I went downstairs. I guess you could say, he got lucky. What's this about a power outage? Oh, that. The elevator stopped all of a sudden. I got the shock of my life. Wow. I don't know how shocked as when Neil ran into that, but as, as Neil when that knife went into his heart, though. That's not funny. When I went to my office, I found Lana there. Could you tell us what you saw? It was a shocking sight. Neil and Sarah Killer were lying in a heap on the floor, all tangled together. Dark was also lying collapsed on the floor. This apparently hits his, he hit his head when he was knocked out. Next to them were those two poor girls, Lana and Emma. I was cradling Emma in her arms. Looking back at it now, she must have already known what her sister had done. Apparently she had already arranged the crime scene. As you can see, it had nothing to do with the forgery. Oh. How can you know that? Because of the victim's body, it had already been moved. So that means... You found the body near Lana's desk. That's right. 
I think you said earlier, it was my suit of armor that really stabbed the prosecutor. Yes. Anyway. As you can see, I had nothing to do with the forgery. So you're saying that the forgery had already, been t had already taken place by the time you arrived at your office. That's exactly what I'm saying. I can understand how Lana must have felt. Moving a body and hiding evidence are inexcusable no matter the circumstances. Is that how it really went down? Staring at the witness won't do any good, Mr. Wright. If you're going to stare at anything, you're better off staring at the court record. Worthy, worthy, always a smooth talker. But which piece of evidence ties get to the... Lana did admit to forging evidence. That can't be the whole truth. Somehow I got to like get to the evidence. <laughs> twist his deck! Why would I want to twist Gumshoe? I'm trying to think about it was Is it the vase on this one? Oh, I'm so smart. You claim it had nothing to do with the forgery. But I'm afraid that as a claim you cannot back up. Explain yourself. Some of the pieces of evidence were found in your office. Take this jar, for example. That's that blue badger you showed us earlier. A piece of this jar was discovered in your safe. Not only that, but the evidence list I presented earlier is actually found inside your desk. It's found where? You see Chief Dent. These articles of evidence were uncovered in your office. Are both concrete proof that you also played in the part in the, the illegal investigation? Chief Gant, what is the meaning of this? Huh. You're a defense attorney who may even rival Worthy. So you admit to it then, that you were involved in the forgery? Who, me? Or do you mean you? Hey, what would I have anything to do with that? Well, you were the one who snuck into my office when you found this evidence. Prosecutors aren't the only ones capable of forging evidence, you know. Defense attorneys can do so too. Isn't that right, Rido? However, Detective Gumshoe was present during the investigation. Worthy, my boy. Not even detectives are exempt from the law. Rest assured, Dick will receive his due punishment. What? If Detective Gumshoe's salary drops any further, he'll end up paying to work. Yes, well, in light of the detective's presence, please give us your testimony regarding these pieces of evidence found in your office and the relation to the forgery that took place at the crime scene. My mic is these days no longer know how to put two and two together. A 
Let's see, what was it now? A jar fragment and a list? For all I know, you could have planted them in my office. And we can't prove when those pieces of evidence were discovered. If they were found after uh, Dark was convicted, then they're worthless. There's no reason I'd participate in a forgery. Rearranging the crime scene wouldn't help me out in any way. Hmm, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor? I'm investigating the crime scene. You should have been more careful to observe protocol. Did you understand that I'm the chief police, right? There will be consequences. Ooh. Indeed, I, will, I believe I will press charges so you won't make the same mistake again. My apologies, Chief, but would you mind waiting until tomorrow for that? Today is, well, you know. Alright, IG, in return, though. I know, I know. That place, right? Oh, what are these guys? Telepathic? Uh, I'm actually going to hit a, hit a BRB right quick. Uh, I got hit at the washroom.
Alright, sorry about that. Sorry about that, holy shit. Had to take a shot. Objection! How's it going, Scion? For all I know, you could have planted them in my office. I'd appreciate it if you stop making these ridiculous allegations. Yes, you do have a point. You wouldn't have the guts to do something like that. What? I'll have you know, back in my day, I once broke into a cattle ranch and tipped. Mr. Wright, what are you saying? Just got up from a nap? Hell yeah. Was a good nap? Feeling refreshed? Anyways, you can't prove you didn't carry in the evidence, can you? If you're proof on the contrary, contrary, contrary you're going to need it later. Later? What are you talking about? What else? I'm talking about when Rito's prints are found. Yes, yeah, so if they're found inside my safe, they would prove his investigation was illegal. Uh, I've never faced anyone as slimy as this guy. Oh. Thanks, Fix. It was weird. Are you okay? Your Doctor Who clip hit me hard in the feels. Oh. Mortality isn't living forever. It's outliving everyone you've ever loved. And that's... If I, if I had the chance to become immortal, I don't know if I would unless I had the chance for somebody else to be immortal with me. I'm a guy who strongly believes in the concept of love. And everything to do with love. I would totally be down if if I had, if I was given the chance for immortality. I would fight for my loved one to also have immortality. Immortality sounds so lonely. It is lonely, and that's the thing. I've never faced anyone as slimy as this guy. Anyways, you can't prove one of those pieces of evidence were discovered. Immortal Elohim. I I don't know if I'd ever do that to him, to be honest. Honestly, I think I wouldn't turn it down. Even if it is lonely. I guess. The things you could say, the histories you could write, or like right as an R-I-G-H-T that were, that were wrong in like future textbooks about this day and age oh I remember back in my day that shit didn't happen etc etc I wouldn't fight for it my fiance says once he gets wrinkly he's done <laughs> yeah honestly uh, and immortality always makes me think of um, oh what the fuck's it called Dementia. Like, I, I feel completely bad for people who have dementia. Because... <sighs> spend your whole life making memories, and at the very last moment, they're gone. Yeah. Do the people you can fuck with just pop up every once in a while. <laughs> Anyways, I had a really weird dream. You want to talk about it? More, you're more than welcome to talk about things like that. This is all purely hypothetical, of course. But suppose I did place those items in my safe. Such an act wouldn't necessarily constitute forgery. Oh, Avery! Thank you so much for the raid, my dude. How's it going? Like pedophilia and underage people actually agreeing with their crap and I'm so confused and grossed out. Ugh. That's an awesome raid message, Avery. Hello. <laughs> you doing all right? Someone's grandmother has dementia. He basically experienced pre-grief. Yeah. Yakuza 4. Did you just start that one? I don't remember seeing you play it before. I know you had a, a huge risk of raid binge. I love watching you play Yakuza. Your reactions to everything is awesome. The verdict? Come. Okay. 
Thanks, thanks, thanks for being uh, the judge, Ali. Appreciate you. Concealing evidence found in, in, at a crime scene isn't forgery. I'm not through speaking yet, Rido. It all depends on when the evidence was discovered. If they were found after Dark was convicted, then they're worthless. Now, you think this jar fragment wasn't discovered in the initial investigation? It would appear not. After all, it wasn't listed in the evidence list. Dear Grey just tired and all like three three fifths of parts of the way through the game. Okie dokie. Just Ali Ali, please take a breath. My my game is starting starting back into the shadows of me. What? It appear not. After all, it wasn't listed in the evidence list. Probably no, it could have suddenly materialized the day after Dark was sentenced. Objection! Oh, and wouldn't that be convenient? Right. The Chief is talking about a possibility, so as long as he can't rule that out, your remarks, however clever they may be, will only succeed in wasting time. Tell me something I don't know. Come now, Rido. Think about it. There's no reason I'd participate in a forgery. How can you look me in the eye and say that? Because I'm innocent. Remember? Who was it that murdered Neil? I'm not sure I care for the word murder here. But in the end, the person responsible for Mr. Marshall's unfortunate demise was Emma Sky. Well, now do you see? Rearranging the crime scene wouldn't help me out in any way. Really, Chief Gant? At the very least, there's one very large benefit you reap, you've reaped from all this. Oh, I wasn't aware. What is this benefit? That would, of course, be the position you have. Chief of Police. Oh. The resolution of the SL9 incident occurred, secured your promotion to Chief. That in itself is sufficient motive. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, that's a good one. Huh? Do you really think I'm that incompetent? What do you mean? You know that the case, I was already in line to become the next chief. The resolution of SL9 merely sped up the inevitable a little. Yes, I do. <laughs> Is that true, Edgeworth? Yes, he was going to be made chief anyway. Gah, be careful when pointing that finger. Or you might wind up being the one pointed at. My mom surprised me? Nice! With what? So that means... There's only one possible motivation for you to commit forgery. Also, I gotta say, I love how everybody in my chat only has two colors of text. There's like an aqua green which is fix, and everybody else is purple. This gets covered in butter and brown sugar. Monkey bread. Have I had monkey bread before? It sounds very familiar. It also sounds very good. Oh. There's only one possible motivation for you to commit forgery. If you didn't do it for yourself, then you did it for someone else. Don't be silly worthy. You know me better than that. There are only three people I look out for. Me, myself, and I. Purple is the best color? Nope, green is. There, now it's out It's out in the open now. Audrey, would you mind if I change my testimony a little? By all means, please do. I wouldn't be anyone's accomplice if there was nothing in it for me. That one mobile so everyone is gray? Nothing in it for you. So the only person about I care about is yours truly. That girl, Lena's little sister, was it? If you think I felt sorry for her, you'd better think again. You're right. You don't feel sorry for anyone. Be tough on crime and tough on people. That's how I was raised. You seem to be lax enough on yourself, though. Ho, ho, ho. Ho. That's a good one, Worthy. 
Could there have been something in it for him? Given his selfishness, would he have helped somebody out? Sure, you might not help anybody out for their sake. But if it benefit you, you might decide to assist someone. Mr. Wright, it appears you're positively determined to portray the chief as a nice man who likes to lend people a hand. That's not what I meant. Very well, then. Who is this person you believe Chief Gant may have helped forge evidence? Chief Prosecutor Lana Sky. The defendant? <laughs> this man's is a nice man's. Oh, my mobile? Nice. I, I hate looking at Twitch on mobile. I hate it so much. The only thing I can really do on mobile is watch VODs. I always try to I always try to do my best to watch my friends' VODs. Occasionally I do miss a couple, but I try my best. Keep keep them on as and I don't mean to sound rude, as background noise while I'm trying to do my work. I believe it's quite obvious in the light of circumstances. Emma Sky fell victim to a series of unfortunate events. Who would want to help her more than her own sister, Lana? And as for Chief Gant, he would have also had a reason to help Lana if, if he if he would also have a reason to help Lana if she asked him to. That reason, of course, is self-profit. Only mobile because I'm not in office yet. Nice. I miss having an office job. Waking up at seven, getting Tim's, going to work, leaving work. Enjoying a nice meal with my cat who's happy with every time I come home. I miss it. Self profit, what do you mean? After the SLN incident was resolved. Now this guy was appointed chief prosecutor of the prosecutor's office. The person who arranged this job change was you, Chief Gant. I would love an office job. What would you do, Avery? Well, like, what would, what, what would your dream job be? My cats just want me to feed them and go away. <laughs> um, unfortunately, my cat's a massive cuddle ball. Let's see if I can actually do I have it. Your Honor, cat. Uh, I, I'll, I'll leave it up. Yeah, this, 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 this is tiny Captain Elohim. He's a couple years old, but... He's the most affectionate ball of fluff. <laughs> only cuddling cat I have is my fiance's cat that only cuddles at nighttime for bed. <laughs> Streaming full time, but I wouldn't want I wouldn't mind any office job really. Okay. Did you go to school for something? I forgot if you've told me that or not. I feel like you did, and I can't remember and I feel bad now. Want a lap cat to snuggle me when I'm gaming or streaming? My cat just sleeps behind me. When I'm doing work in the morning, he always sleeps on me. But how would he profit from all of this? He'd be able to use the chief prosecutor as his puppet. Essentially, he would acquire unchecked authority of, over all investigations. Navy for IT, but didn't make it past basic. I remember you telling me that. Lap cats are going until your legs fall asleep. <laughs> yeah. That whenever I'm trying to stream and like my cat is like resting on my right arm. But my right arm is what's used for the mouse. Do you mean to tell me that despite the chief's formidable appearance, he plays with puppets? Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this man is a judge. 
Even one of my expectors, expensive collector's games. You have, like, collector's games? <laughs> Thanks, Sawyer. Oh, wait. You must be a puppet as in someone forced to do his bidding. Never mind. Judge, you're a fucking dumbass. <laughs> A minute, Chief. This is a line of sky and forging evidence. Your motive to appoint her as your as Chief Prosecutor so you could control her. Right on, my boy. You have quite an imagination. Let me ask you something. What? Do you have any proof of this? That I controlled Lana? For example, is Lana, fi is Lana testifying that I've done such a thing? Lana. She's keeping quiet to protect Emma. But there's no way she'd testify against Scat. Still can't fathom the price of Pokemon Pearl for DS, Pokemon Coliseum, and Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness. I have both Coliseum and Gale of Darkness. Uh, like, hard copy discs. Are they expensive? I mean, let me... Let me see. eBay. Are... Are... What? Yo, what? I'm seeing an average of 210 Canadian. Fuck, wow. That's fucking bonkers. I'm keeping this game. And to think one of my roommates almost uh, stole it in college. Make me tempted to sell them right now even though I love those games. Gale of Darkness is a fucking banger game. It's like one of the best GameCube games. Actually, I'm curious. How much is Wind Waker? Ah, about 80 bucks. Okay. Damn. Oh. Hey, thank you for telling me that information. That's actually really interesting. Is that the one we did the scuffed nuzlocke? Yes. I should honestly do that again sometime. I just wanted to play this game today so I can actually finish it off. And, you know, uh, show, show off the, uh, the, new, new, the new schedule. Oh. The, 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 new, the new cycle of games. They're very balanced starting. Yeah, it was like a level 100 Metang, I think it was. There's no way she testified against Scant. I'm afraid without any proof, this all amounts to nothing more than mere conjecture. Unless, that is also what happened in this incident. This incident? Which one would that be? Of course I'm talking about the murder of Detective Bruce Goodman. Chief Prosecutor has been acting strange throughout this entire trial. Almost as if someone has been controlling her. Worthy, you better watch your tongue. I wouldn't want you to get hurt. Just what do you mean? What do you mean, it's your honor? That Chief Gant is involved in the murder of Detective Goodman. Not only that, the Chief is now making... is now making Lana take the rap to cover up his involvement. What? 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 Order, order, order. I said order. Mr. Wright, you, you can't be serious. Huh? This, this is an affront to the highest ranking officer in our law enforcement agency. <laughs> you better watch out. You better watch out. To accuse the chief of police of blackmail and murder? That's impossible. I wasn't gonna. <laughs> Your Honor, I was merely reiterating what Mr. Edgeworth said in easier to understand language.
It's too late, Mr. Wright. There's no turning back for us now. Looks like he's the one who's decided to go through with this. Watch me fucking do it. Can you prove this, Mr. Wright? Uh, the chief, a high-ranking officer of the law, is involved in this murder. Good question. Regardless of his rank or title, Chief Gant is just a man. The question is, is he a criminal? I believe the evidence will tell. I see. Alright then. Let's see what Mr. Wright's got, and it better be good. Show us his evidence that ties Chief Gant to the murder of Detective Goodman. Is this the ID card list? Yes, the one that shows who entered the evidence room on the day of the crime. There was one ID on the list we couldn't determine on the, o the owner of yesterday. Seven. There's no way you can prove that my card number. It is your number. What? How do you know that? Safe in Chief Gant's office requires a code to open. A seven digit code. Seven digits? You don't mean. I'm afraid so, Your Honor. His code was 777777. Same as the remaining ID card number on that list. Chief Gant. You, have it, you entered the evidence room on the day of the crime. Ooh, we got him. Order, order. Chief Gant, what do you have to say? Nothing. The defense search of my office has been in violation of regulations. And I will demand uh, Mr. Wright be punished to the maximum extent of the law. But right now, this court this court demands an explanation from you. How about the use of this ID card? Chief Gant, so you admit it. You answered the evidence room. On the day of the crime? What about it? I'm chief of police, whether it's the evidence room or the bathroom. What's the difference? I can go anywhere I want. Tell me. When you entered the room, where were, were you alone? I always go to the bathroom alone, as I do with the evidence room. Always piss with a buddy, friends. Detective Goodman wouldn't have happened to be with you that day, would he? Of course not. Why would he be? I hadn't seen him in days. You hadn't seen him in days? Chief Gant. I'm afraid you've just undone yourself. On that day, you've had to have met with Detective Goodman. What do you mean? This trial is this trial's purpose is to determine Lanax Guy's guilt. <laughs> Takes a shit in the evidence room. Yeah. Actually, fuck. That reminds me, I gotta deal with something. Give me a second.
Sorry, I'm back. I had to uh, go around and grab a document. Uh, of course not. Okay. Sorry, guys. Alright, for the meantime, let's continue on. This trial's purpose is to determine the truth. The chief can't met the victim on the day of the crime. Then we need to determine one thing. What transpired during that meeting? In that case, Mr. Wright, I'm going to have to ask you for evidence. Show us proof that the victim went to meet Chief Gant on the day of the crime. Detective Goodman lost his ID card on the day of the crime. Taco B. Taco B or not Taco B. <laughs> Detective Goodman lost his ID on the card on the day of the crime. But to be more accurate, Jake Marshall stole it. So Detective Goodman fi filled out a lost item report. He would have had to give that report to the chief of police. Yeah, you're in possession of the report. Which means he can't be sure he filled it. Filed it. He filed it. How do I know you ask? Because you needed to enter the evidence from that day. You needed to. Yes, to transfer the evidence out. Oh. Detective Goodman took the form to you, Chief Gant. Then, you accompanied the detective to the evidence room. I accompanied him. There's no other way the murderer and the detective Goodman could have entered the room. Hold on, let me guess what you're going to say next. I, the chief of police, murdered poor uh, Goodman. Exactly. But wait, the chief didn't necessarily need to accompany him to the evidence room. He could have just lent him his ID card. Yes. Now that you mention it, I believe I might have done some of the sorts. Sorry, but that's not possible. According to the record, your card was only used once. Blurst comments, but wait, there's more. <laughs> yeah, you showed us your ID card earlier. If you had really lent it to Detective Goodman, it would have been found on his body. <laughs> no! Oh, hell yeah. Chief Gant, he didn't. The murder was most likely a spur of the moment crime for no one in their right mind. Would choose the police department as a place to commit murder. After the murder, you contact Lana at the prosecutor's office. Why? To dispose of Detective Goodman's body, of course. You're forgetting, Mr. Wright. That a victim's body was discovered in the prosecutor's office parking lot. How do you manage to move it there? I was at the police department the entire day, you know. Everyone's aware that Lana had stayed at the prosecutor's office after the ceremony. Everyone except me, it seems. I'll tell you the chief of police. You have an entire police force at your disposal. I used to think I just ordered an officer to do it. Hey, you take this here dead body over to the prosecutor's office. I don't think so. Chief can't. He left all the evidence we need to prove how you moved the body to the prosecutor's office. And all this time, I thought it was a useless clue that was taking up space. How could Chief have moved the body? Mr. Wright, show us his evidence. To move the victim's body, Chief can't use this. This is how we moved Detective Goodman's body. A parking stop? Miles Edgeworth. You mean, the body was found in the trunk of Mr. Edgeworth's car. I think it's obvious what happened. The body was moved by that car. You mean I, I, I carried the victim's body? 
Precisely so. But wait. Even you know. I didn't plan on returning to my office. After the ceremony finished that day. But you did return. Tell me why. Ah. I was asked to go. By Chief Gant, no less. Tell me you wanted to keep it here in the prosecutor's office. In any case, on the day of the stabbings, I brought it this back here. So you see, would you really take it to the prosecutor's office while the screwdriver? With the victim's body in your trunk. Detective Goodwin's body was carried in the trunk of Mr. Edgeworth's car? Yes. Unless, of course, you have another explanation, Chief. Why else would you have asked Mr. Edwards to transport evidence from a closed case? There's only one possible explanation. To transport the body to your accomplice, Miss Lana Sky. Order, order, order! What's going on here? Is there no room for rebuttal to, uh, to the defense's outrageous accusations? Think back to the photograph Miss Starr took at the prosecutor's office. This was not a photo of the body being stuffed in the trunk to be taken away. It was, it was exactly the opposite. Gross, my kids were in my office and put their sticky fingers on my headset? Ugh. Do you have any, like, wipes to clean it off? Yeah, sanitizer, that shit. It's exactly the opposite. It was a photo of the body being taken from the trunk. Chief Gant, please say something. I believe... Your time's up. My time's up. Sorry, Redo, but I'm having lunch with the, uh, the District Attorney General after this. We have to get going if we're going to make it in time for the early bird special. But the cross-examination isn't finished yet. Remember what I told you earlier? A police chief has all kind of, excuse me, weapons at his disposal. Weapons? I like the right fight right to refuse to testify. I'm invoking that right now. What? That is not a right to be casually invoked. There are certain risks to be considered. Objection. So you're going to just run away after all this? Run away. Don't make me laugh worthy. I stabbed old Goodman. That's what you're saying, right? But if you had any conclusive evidence, you would have presented it by now. Oh, well, I... Think I had Lana dispose of the body? If so, then show your proof and get it over with. Hey, his baby wipes? Nice. I'll say it again, Mr. Wright. Damon Gant is the current chief of police. This court will not tolerate any accusations to get him without concrete proof. Well, Mr. Wright? Y your Honor? Do you have any concrete proof? Proof that Chief Gant murdered Detective Goodman and made Miss Sky dispose of the body? Do you have any concrete proof? I can't let him just squirm his way out of this. I've got to keep the pressure on. Yes, Your Honor. I do have such evidence. Now please hurry up and present it. Just remember... You better prove uh, Chief Gant murdered Detective Goodman beyond a shadow of a doubt. Detective Goodman without a shadow of a doubt.
So what is exactly is this evidence? It's proof as to whether or not it's enough to demonstrate the chief's guilt. I'll let you be the judge. But I am the judge. Oh, fuck. Alright, what do you think, Your Honor? What I think, Mr. Wright, is I'm going to be late for lunch. Say it again, Mr. Wright. Damon Gantz is the current chief of police. This court will not tolerate any accusations against him without concrete proof. Well, Mr. Wright, what the fuck is the evidence? Yeah, Your Honor? Have any concrete proof? Proof that Chief Gant murdered Detective Goodman and made Miss Sky dispose of the body. Murdered Detective Goodman. Maybe I don't have proof. It's no use showing evidence that I'm not even sure of myself. No, Your Honor. At present, I have no conclusive evidence. Huh. See, Uchi? In that case, this court is forced to penalize you for your allegations against the Chief. What? Here's a tip. Never gamble what you can't afford to lose, righto? It seems that Lady Luck was on my side again today. Okay, Edgy, I'll leave the rest to you. I warned you earlier, Mr. Wright. This is an affront to senior officer in our nation's law enforcement agency. Ah! Oh. Lady Luck, hmm? Maybe you should have a word with her. Mr. Edgeworth, what do you mean? There's one lady who knows the real truth behind this trial. We haven't yet had the honor of hearing her testimony. A lady who knows the truth, another witness. The absence of conclusive evidence, there's only... The only other method of proof is testimony. But Chief Kent has invoked his right to refuse to testify. There's still someone else. One more... Oh, Lana can testify. One more witness who can answer all the questions raised in this trial. Someone right in this very room. Mr. Edgeworth, who is this person? Hmm. Why are you asking me, Your Honor? Have you forgotten? The defense is the one calling the witnesses today. Mr. Wright, does such a witness exist? You should now be willing to tell the truth. We can't just stop now. Yes, Your Honor, the defense calls forth. The defendant. Miss Lana Sky. She was in the underground parking lot at 5.15 on February 21st. I will declare not guilty, get wrecked. Thanks, Gio. Appreciate you. Her task to dispose of the victim's body. In accordance with a certain someone's orders. Hmm. Mr. Edgeworth. Prosecution has no objections, Your Honor. How are you doing today, Cheeto? The court will now take its final recess for the day. Fifteen minutes, we will reconvene to hear the defendant's testimony. This court is now in re- hold on. Huh? Chief Gant, I thought you were going to eat. Listen good, Lana. He's talking to Lana. I don't think you need me to tell you this, but if you accept Mr. Wright's claims, there will be terrible consequences. That's right. Your sister will be found guilty for Neil Marshall's murder. Ah, this isn't good. Of course you never support such outrageous claims anyway, right? Just something to think about. Alright then. I got a lunch date to meet. I like how once Edgeworth finds out he's transported the body, he did the biggest 180. <laughs> if there aren't any further objections, the court is now in recess. Looks like we can manage to stay in the game. Yeah. Thanks for your help, Edgeworth. That chief. He's something else, eh, pals? Detective Gumshoe. Ha ha ha. I'm not a detective anymore. Oh. Damn it. Oh yeah, sorry about that. There's a, there's a Gale of Darkness GameCube? What? Alright, Sion, I need you to saw some, saw some Link. 
Uh, are you part of the Discord? Wow! <laughs> sorry, I saw wow. Oh yeah, sorry about that. Ah, don't worry, I've already decided where, where to work now. At your office. My office? Sure. I'll take the place of that top-knotted girl you used to work with. Could he mean... Maya? That's worth like three to five hundred... Three... Wow. Damn. Looks like we're all moves now. Chief Gant... Chief Gant's done it again. How does he always get the upper hand? It's not very as the rights for fees to testify. <laughs> Sell down rights. Remember what the judge said. The chief has not a right to be casually invoked. There are certain risks to be considered. Can I have a 99% sale? <laughs> I still have a GameCube surprisingly. I do too, but I think the chart the, the power cord is busted somehow. Give you a special sale of these nuts. <laughs> Got them. Excuse me. There are certain risks to be considered. Ah, yes. Risks. What did he mean by that? It's simple. When the chief refuses to testify, the opposite also holds true. He forfeits his right to say anything, too. Emma. Emma, are you okay? Yeah, when I came to, I was in the medical office. I've been listening to the trial from the gallery. So she heard everything that's been going on. I have three game, three game cubes. Jeez, Scion. <laughs> Cheeto, Cheeto out here with the biggest deal of his life. Sorry, everything that's been going on. Um, Emma, I'm sorry for what I said before. No, don't be. It was the truth. You know, it's funny. I almost feel somehow relieved. Relieved? Yeah. Now I finally know what really happened. I think all, that all this time, my sister was being blackmailed by that terrible man. Where do you want me to put the link? Uh, Game Chat works, yeah, I think. And she did it all just to protect me. Ever since her appointment as chief prosecutor, everyone who knew her said she changed. Perhaps it was easy that way for her. What do you mean? What do you think I mean? To follow Chief Gant's orders. She must have shut herself up deep inside. To force herself to do anything and everything the chief told her to do. That must be why she came so cold. It was all my fault. It's all because I, I murdered Mr. Marshall. Hey, don't go blaming yourself now. Won't blame anyone. Blame society, pal. We live in one. Chief Gant may be able to fool everyone else with his forgery. But he can't fool my memory. I remember now. I knocked Mr. Marshall into that armor. I, I see. Well, we better get back. It's time for the final act. Thanks, Sion. Appreciate it. Emma, why don't you just wait here? No, I'm going with you. I want to be there. When Lana tells the truth. Let's go, right? It's time to end this. Wait, there's a third part? You know what? Fuck it. Final part. Emma has some balls. Hell yeah. Trial ladder two. You, you dumb bastards of fucking Capcom. Okay. This is the finale. Now then. Will defendant at Miss Lana Sky please take the stand? 
I bet that you paused the verb like 10 times now. Yep, yeah, about that. Let's see, two prior, two mid, two. Yeah, about about that much. Miss Lanaska, you're the chief prosecutor. I'm sure you're aware of what is required of me. But, Mr. Edgeworth, you already know everything. You know, although I've done these past two years. Please provide the court with your testimony, Miss Sky. And remember, you are under oath. We want to hear the truth. Of course. The truth. Lana, no matter what happens, I'll always be your sister. Now then, your testimony, if you will. First, tell us about your relationship with Chief Gant. Everything hinges on your testimony. You're the only one chance we have to get at Gant. Gant and the Fabrication. I worked alongside Gant for, th for years. There is no truth to his blackmail theory. I forgot fabricated the evidence two years ago all by myself. When I found Prosecutor Marshall's body, I rearranged the crime scene. My only motivation was to get Dark convicted. It had nothing to do with Emma. Hmm. Are you sure about this testimony? Your Honor, I'm confessing to a capital offense. Of course, I'm sure. But Lana... If this is true, then that means Chief Gant has nothing to do with this. That's what I've been telling you from the beginning. Please, Mr. Wright, you've got to help her. She's sacrificing herself because of me. What if she's telling the truth? She's not. I know my own sister. Whenever she speaks stiffly like that, she's hiding something inside. Deep down, she's really screaming in agony. <laughs> yeah, this is no time to start second-guessing myself. Defense may now begin its cross-examination. <laughs> Son of a bitch, I hate botching sneezes. Also, I'm going to take a quick peek at that... Gam cube. Not bad, but I thought it would have been purple. Oh, still cool. Gant to the fabrication. I worked alongside Gant for years. How many years exactly? Ever since I made senior detective. Let's see, I was 24 then, so that would be five years. Detective Gant and Detective Sky were legendary partners. Full color change definitely been a nice, yeah. Let me charge my phone so my battery doesn't die mid-trip. Okie dokie. I personally saw them testify in numerous cases. She must have been good, coming from the same school as Mia. Damon Gant was a respectable detective, that's why. There's no truth to his blackmail theory. But think about it, Miss Sky. Damon murdered Detective Goodman. He told me so much yesterday in jail. You still don't get it, do you, Mr. Wright? Log. I'm guilty, I'm guilty, I'm guilty. Judge, well, I can't really tell if this is guilty or no. Yeah, yeah. Any any testimony you cannot pre uh, present in court is as useless as as gossip. I stabbed Detective Goodman with a knife. And... I fabricated the evidence two years ago all by myself. So as to help your sister. Joe Dark was a serial killer. My sister almost became his last victim on that day. I didn't want that incident to ruin her life. But what she did was justifiable self-defense. She wouldn't have been charged with anything. That's not the point. She was traumatized that day, all because of that creep. That's why I couldn't forgive him. Lana. 
So that's why you fabricated the evidence two years ago? When I found Prosecutor Marshall's body, I rearranged the crime scene. You said that you did this all by yourself. Yes. Would you mind telling us what you found when you arrived at the crime scene? Seems I was the first person to discover the scene. Broken prosecutor ward knife was stuck in the victim's body. What? Prosecutor Marshall died on, from an unfortunate accident. That's only a situation you dreamed was possible. The reality is, it wasn't my sister who took the prosecutor's life. Fantasize all you want, Mr. Wright, but I'll never change the statement. You mean Prosecutor Marshall wound up being killed by Dark? Something like that. That is so what happened to the other murder weapon. Dark was carrying a switchblade knife. Oh. That was lying on the floor a little distance away. It was probably knocked away in this in the struggle. That's not how it went down. She's trying to cover it up with more lies. All just to protect me. So when you found the scene like this, what did you do? After all, this is what everything boils down to. Yes. I broke off the tip of Dark's knife, planted it inside the wound, and then moved the body. You planted the tip of the Dark's... and then you moved the body? Can you fucking let me speak? But why? Why would you do that? You've all people should know, Edgeworth. You've always had a good head on your shoulders. My head is that bad, but maybe I would ask for the sake of the others. Uh, why did you move the body? When you showed up on the scene, where exactly was the victim's body? It was where you deduced it was, by Chief Gant's desk. Well, the body's found by your desk. Why'd you move it there? The reason for that is simple. Something was, the witness explains in more detail. The reason this guy moved the body. The pieces of the jar that shattered the events to threaten my plan. Pieces of the jar, you mean? Yes, that wretched jar you showed us earlier. In order to show that Dark committed the crime, I felt it would be more expedient to move the body. So, when you first found the body, the jar was already... Of course, it had been shattered to pieces. If you look at the crime scene, it would be clear right away what happened. Neil Marshall was dead, and Dark was lying unconscious. In other words, the jar must have been broken during their struggle. I see. What's the matter, Emma? Probably the jar shattered at the time the crime was committed. I have a feeling there's more to it than that. Yeah, how could the name have been written on if it was shattered? There must be a contradiction here somewhere. Anyway, I committed this fabrication completely alone. My only mitigation was to get Dark convicted. It had nothing to do with Emma. So you rearranged the crime scene. Are you sure you didn't do this to keep Emma from looking like the murderer? Yeah, I broke the jar, my bad. How many times do I have to tell you, Mr. Wright? Emma didn't do it, period. Are you so desperate to hide that fact? You're willing to risk the death sentence? <laughs> she did, so I wouldn't be blamed for what happened. In any case, as a prosecutor, I would have done is unpardonable. There's nothing I can do to make up for my actions. Mr. Wright, my sister's lying. Looks like she's determined to protect you to the end. She insists she fabricated the evidence by herself. There's no way she could have done it alone. I gotta get Lena to talk more. If she's lying, then she's bound to slip up and make a contradiction.
Yeah, because the name couldn't have been written because the fucking thing was broken. This guy, I understand how you feel. You committed that crime two years ago to protect your sister. You mean the forgery at the scene where Neil Marshall was murdered? If that truth were to be exposed now, the past two years of your life will have been in vain. Even so, I'm compelled to bring it to everyone's attention. A significant contradiction within your testimony. Yeah, but it was written by a ghost. Contradiction in my testimony. You testified, and I quote, The pieces of the jar that shattered during the evident events threatened my plan. That's right. Do you have a problem with that? It's a simple oversight, really. See, a message was written on this jar with the victim's blood. Yes, the prosecutor must have written in his final moments. Exactly so. And this is where the contradiction lies. Judge, give the guilty verdict ready. No, Cheeto, I'm fighting against that. Cheeto, please. In order for the victim to be able to write this message on the jar, it must not even have been broken before he died. Ah. He couldn't have written them his name on a shattered jar. <laughs> Alright, go fight you. Hey, how's it going, Sai? Saw those pictures, Sai? Nice. Your Honor, it would appear. More information is regarding to this jar and its bloody messages. We may be missing something critical here. Something critical. Chief Prosecutor, it seems you're as in the dark as we are. Well, the truth towards what we are headed. What? It's going? Are you alright? We need to talk about anything, so I need to figure out when I'm going to destroy my sleep schedule. Why are you going to destroy your sleep schedule? This is Manfred von Karman now. Ah, shit! <laughs> Just tell us exactly what you saw. We'll piece together the information to arrive at the truth. Very well, the witness may now continue her testimony. Jar and message in blood. I immediately noticed the blood traces on the jar. But it was dark in the room, I didn't have time to check it out. To be safe, I wiped away the blood. The fragments were large, so I'm sure I got them all. All I could think of it was wiping them clean before they were discovered. I'm going to do a very long stream, basically, and hit 24 hours. Why? Just to... For the fuck of it, or... I mean, you were the one who wiped away the message in blood. It was I wasn't chief prosecutor at the time. She didn't think Dark was a real murderer. That's why she tried to erase the real evidence. Very well, the defense may now begin its cross-examination. Channel goal? Ah, I see, okay. Fortnite for 24 hours? Fuck, I put a fucking drill on the side of my before I did that. I immediately noticed the blood traces in the jar. So the jar was already broken. It's a miracle that thing I hadn't broken earlier. It certainly looks as feeble as the defense's case. But not as feeble as the judge's judgment. We're gonna go for nine hours, and anything after is an extra mileage. Okie doke. You were a nice detective, and you never missed a detail. Do you really expect us to believe you didn't investigate what was written on the jar pieces? Normally I would have. But it was dark in the room, and I didn't have time to check it out. Alright, thanks for the lurk, Scion. Thanks for showing me that, uh, Gale Darkness Cube. Gale, Gale Q? Something. So you know your sister's name was written on the jar? No. If I had known, I would have gathered all the pieces and ground them to dust. Well, that helps my case. Lana, you do that for me? Seems you two might make up yet. Anyway, I just barely had enough time to move the body as it was. If someone happened upon the scene, you'd lose your chance to erase the evidence. You must have been in a hurry. I was. I know I had to destroy the evidence before anyone came. This is rather shocking. To be safe, I wiped away the blood. Holy. 
Play this action of yours reveals what really happened. What do you mean? You really thought Dark killed Prosecutor Marshall. You wouldn't have wiped away the blood. What else could I have done in that situation? Lana? I only had a few moments. There wasn't enough time for me to do anything else but gather up the pieces. Is that with the second defense attorney? Maybe? The fragments were large, so I'm sure I got them all. But how could you see with the power out? It should have been pitch black in that office. A detective was always prepared, Mr. Wright. Even now, I always carry a pocket light and a camera with me. I even, even I carry an emergency bo a bottle of emergency luminol wherever I go. I need to get high somehow. I never miss anything. I got every last piece. All I could think of it was wiping them clean before they were discovered. So you illegally re uh, rearranged the crime scene? Yes. I don't have any excuse for my actions. I'm so sorry, Lana. I didn't know. I've treated so badly all you, that, uh, you so badly all this time. It's not too late. There's still plenty of time to make up. After we've gotten to the bottom of this incident. No doubt this day will leave a permanent stain on the history of the prosecutor's office. More contradictions have surfaced in her testimony. Your sister's really putting up a fight. She must really care about you. Still, she's not doing this the right way. I think I've finally figured out the contradictions in her testimony. There's one final possibility that might turn everything around. because Gant had one. This guy, I believe this jar conceals the truth even you were unaware of. What? Find the final piece of this jar in Chief Gant's safe. In the Chief's safe? But how? I knew it. She really didn't know. There's something even more disturbing about that final piece. There was... still blood on it. Well, the witness just testified. That she gave her, uh, gathered every last piece and wiped the blood off them. Yes, which leaves us with only one explanation. On the night the prosecutor Marshall was murdered, you were not the first one to show up on the scene. Chief Gant got there before you. But could the defendants have simply missed a piece? I'm afraid that's unlikely. Pieces are too big for anyone to miss, let alone an ace detective. That may well be, but everyone makes mistakes. Even I wasted an entire day looking for my dentures. They were in my mouth all along. Ha! Can you believe that? Okay. Have you forgotten, Your Honor, that your dentures are still in your mouth? <laughs> when this witness arrived at the scene, the jar was already broken. Oh, that. There's no way a name could have been written on a shattered jar. Another person discovered this scene prior to the witness. I'm pretty not implying this person was Chief Gant at the time. He was looking for Dark downstairs. And besides, even if he was there first, why would he break the jar? The question is, if he did arrive there first, why did he hide that fact for two years? Why was he just moving his mouth without saying anything? Well, Your Honor, can you answer us that? N nah. What? What the fuck? Why? Why is the judge having a breakdown? Wait. I'm not the one on trial here. Sorry. 
Dan McGann's arrived at the, uh, the crime scene prior to the witness. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, I know, Sawyer, I know. Is I, I don't know, but I, I feel like it's something you'd probably want to have. Oh. It's fix. It's fix. It's the hammer time. Okay, fine, I get to do it. Brian! Brian! Oh, he's probably off get. Oh, yeah, no, he said he was going to get his thing charged. Whoops. Completely forgot. Dan McGantz arrived at the crime scene prior to the witness. He proceeded to break the jar. He burp, uh, he uh, and purposely hit one of the broken pieces. Question, what is this action called? Fabrication of evidence. But why would Chief Gant do that? In light of what happened afterwards, isn't it clear? What happened afterwards? Discovering the scene, Lana Skye believed her sister Emma, her sister Emma killed the victim. Determined to help her sister, she saw Gant's aid. Lending her his aid, Gant helped create evidence that incrim incriminated Dark, sparing Emma, and therein lies the reason. The reason why Miss Sky became the chief's puppet. Ooh, ah, she drew blood. No, I did it on my own. <clears throat> Please, sis, stop trying to protect the chief. I... I can't watch you suffer anymore for my sake. No, you didn't. It wasn't you, Emma. You didn't kill anyone. I don't believe anything Mr. Wright says. Defense attorneys make up for their most foul lies to defend clients. Foul lies? Imagine that for coming from my own client. I guess you do seem the type who, li who likes to twist the truth. Wait a minute. What if... We're still smack dab in the middle of Gant's trap. Is something wrong, Mr. Wright? Lana? Maybe right after all. What do you mean, right? So you do tell foul lies then, Mr. Wright. Thanks, Emma. This guy. Please testify once more. But... If evidence was fabricated behind your back, then Emma's accidental killing of Prosecutor Marshall might also be a lie. But I do remember knocking over Mr. Marshall. This guy, if you will. I... I can't. There's nothing to be afraid of anymore. This cross-examination may not change a thing. However, there's a possibility that it will. If you tell the truth. Very well. I'll testify about what I really saw. All right, the witness may testify once more for the final time. When I arrived, I found Mr. Marshall's body impaled on that suit of armor and sword. Emma and Dark were lying unconscious on the floor nearby. When I saw what happened, I thought she did it. That's why I raised all the evidence that linked her to the murder. I Chief Gant helped me uh, remove, the sword from the, remove the body from the sword and carry it. If that's all really was a fabrication, Emma might be innocent. Hell yeah. Unbelievable. The body was impaled on the armor's sword. You were the only one who saw that. If only you had proof. Actually, I do have proof. I gave it to Mr. Wright just this morning. What? To me? It's a picture I took of the crime scene as I encountered it. I thought it might be needed. But I don't remember receiving a picture like that. Lana must have known. See, Mr. Wright, she really does have faith in you. Very well, Mr. Wright. Please present this picture. I don't remember receiving any pictures from Lana. Lana said she gave it to you this morning, right? It seems you're getting to remember something from her then. Let's check that evidence again. Must be a picture in there somewhere. I don't remember what she gave me.
I have made myself a cup of tea. Nice. The very last evidence is the most recent one. Yeah, I know. But that wasn't this morning. Was it? There's a picture here. Oh, oh my. This is the actual crime scene. Or the detective saw the crime scene like this. Because I contacted Criminal Affairs only after I had rearranged everything. Mr. Wright, the piece cut out from his vest, could that be? The cloth we found inside Chief Gant's safe. Oh, but that an incriminator, and then Lana will instantly like seize up again. This is a handprint, isn't it? That cloth, it had fingerprints on it. These ever fingerprints of the Czar must be the real murderer. What but those fingerprints? They're yours, Emma. Why are your lips turning all purple, Mr. Wright? Anyway, let's get on with the cross-examination. So as long as you tell the truth, we should be able to flush out the real murderer. Very well, the defense may now begin its cross-examination. When I arrived, I found Mr. Marshall's body in Oh. Oh, that fucking gave me a heart attack. Fuck. Come now, Edgy. This is the poorest excuse for a trial I've ever seen. Chief Gant. What, now you want to make me out as a bad guy too? If so, I'd like to put in a word or two in my defense. I'm afraid it's too late for that. What? You already declined to testify. That means you forfeited your right to make statements of any sort. This must be that risk we were talking about earlier. <laughs> Gant will feed your nails. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy the sound of the noose tightening around your own neck. God. The... Ah, so what? You think I'm worried? Sorry to disappoint you. But I don't need to make us any statements. What do you mean? The evidence will do all the talking for me. Even if I can't testify, I can still present evidence. Yes, that's true. Wait, you mean... You still have some conclusive evidence. No, I don't, but someone does. Someone? So what's your excuse, Righto? Why haven't you been creeping quiet about it? You do have something to show us, right? Some that proves over who knocked over Mr. Uh, Neil Marshall for causing his death. Don't trust the evidence if he's using two suspects. Yeah. Conclusive evidence that leaves no room for doubt. Is this true, Mr. Wright? We show that piece of evidence now. And be sure to be made out as a murderer. Mr. Wright, if you have any more evidence, present it now. And if you try to conceal anything, you will be the one appearing before the Board of Inquiries. What do I do now? 
Better think this through carefully. I can't afford to make the wrong decision. Should I present that piece of evidence? The one that shows you really killed uh, Prosecutor Marshall. I don't know what to do. I feel like I shouldn't because if I do present a dirty badge. Yeah, I'm not going to. You can always reload. Yeah, I did save. Your Honor, I don't have any evidence I can present at this point in time. What? You lie. Chief Gantz. You, you opened my safe. I know you took what was inside. The conclusive evidence. I don't know what you're talking about. Mr. Wright, why don't you show them? We found it together. Oh, I see. It's because you know the truth, don't you? You know whose fingerprints are on it. That's why you won't present it. What are you talking about, Chief Gant? Can't you figure it out? Take a good look at this picture. See the victim's vest? Noticing anything odd about the chest area? Looks part of it's been cut out for some reason. You mean you had this in your safe? What that means you, the Chief of Police, have been concealing evidence. This is going to be the biggest scandal in the history of the police department. Is it going to force me to present it? Impressive. To be honest, I didn't think you had the gall, righto? Well, can't you just let... You can't, I can't let you just pin me up as the murderer. I'll tell you what really happened. What, you mean you admit to it? I was the first person to arrive at the crime scene that day. It then occurred to me that I could use the situation to control Lana. So you really were manipulating her. I knew Lana. If I made it look like the blame lay with her sister, then when she saw the scene she would ask for my aid. So you assisted Miss Skye. I told her to arrange all the evidence. I had, her plant the knife t I had her plant the knife tip in the victim's body and move it across the room. Ugh. And then I ended up using that evidence to get Joe Dirk convicted. When I had tampered with the crime scene, I hid two pieces of evidence. This is before Lana arrived at the scene, mind you. Two pieces of evidence. I mean, these items in your safe. But why? For insurance, of course. Insurance. I was sure my plan would work, but it's always best to be prepared for the worst. I wasn't about to let anybody take the blame for a murder that girl committed. <coughs> Sorry. You mean you were calculating that far ahead while forging evidence? What do you take me for, a fool? I didn't make police chief by dumb luck. See this jar fragment? I had the most uh, legible part in the Emma's name. I didn't expect Lana to go and wipe the blood off all the pieces. What if you fabricated all the evidence? What's to say you didn't fabricate the message on this jar too? Ho ho ho. Some people just don't know when to quit, do they? That's why I kept one more item for insurance. You mean that piece of cloth? Come now, Onrido. Cough it up already. I know you have it. What are you waiting for, Mr. Wright? So you admit to it then, Chief Gantz. That you were hiding the cloth you cut off the victim's vest in your safe. Yes, I admit it. I didn't want to have to do that, being Chief and all. 
But it's a lot better than being portrayed as a murderer. Well then, Mr. Wright, what do you have to say for yourself? Just a moment ago you said you didn't have any evidence you could present. Foolish move, Rhino. You should have just shown it then before it was too late. It's been a long battle. But the moment of truth has finally arrived. As long as I don't mess up here, victory is mine. Now that he's declared that he's fa fa fabricated evidence, I can do this, right? Your Honor, I do have evidence to present now. Alright, then let's see this conclusive evidence. The evidence you showed that you really murdered Prosecutor Marshall. Let me verify this once more. On the day of the crime, you personally cut out this piece of the victim's vest. Oh yes, at last you finally brought it out into the open. There's a handprint on this piece of cloth. Your Honor, the pro prosecution requests to, be, to immediately be sent to the lab for analysis. This handprint on the leather must have been a strong impact for it to be left so clearly. You mean, it cannot have been forged. It must be authentic, conclusive evidence. <laughs> You're as slow on the uptake as ever, Worthy. What? Think about it. Righto had all this time to present his evidence. And he was reluctant to do so. Why would that be? You mean you already know? You know whose fingerprints are on that? Mr. Wright, do you really know? Where the fingerprints must be belong to must be the real murderer. Whose fingerprints are they? Very well. I'll tell you. It should be okay now. Everything's proceeding as predicted. Time to twist his dick! The person who's, whom these fingerprints belong to is... Emma? Emma Sky. What? They're mine? I'm sorry, Emma. But why? Why didn't you tell me? Oh, ho, 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 ho. you're really something, Rido. You know this girl did it all along, and he still tried to pin the murder on me. So it's true, tragic but true. This girl really did shove Prosecutor Marshall to his death. How could you, you, you monster, Miss Sky? You know whose fingerprints were those were all along, yet you, you acted like she really didn't, Miss Sky. It's not over yet. What? I said this trial isn't over yet. Ha, but I'm afraid it is over, boy. Not, not only for this trial, but your career, too. You purposely concealed this conclusive evidence. That, my friend, is a serious offense. I'm looking forward to pressing charges after the defendant is convicted. I'll have your badge, boy. I don't give two shits about what you say, orange funny man. What's the matter? Caught got your tongue? Aren't you going to tell us how it feels? How it feels to be the one single-handedly turned into a poor little girl into a murderer? <laughs> Get nade aid Before I do that, there's just one little thing I have to clear up. Oh, and what's that? Who really killed Prosecutor Neil Marshall? Sorry, Gant, but I already sold the badge, bitch. <laughs> what? Chief Gant, you are absolutely right. This piece of cloth proves who the real murderer is. Who killed Neil Marshall, you ask? It was Emma Sky, wasn't it? I'm afraid that's not possible. You see, this piece of cloth contains a critical contradiction. What a contradiction? What is this fool babbling about? I'm talking about a contradiction. One that proves who the real killer is. 
Mr. Wright, this piece of cloth, what it could possibly contradict? Chief Gant, your tyrannical reign ends here. Behold, the piece of evidence that contradicts this cloth. Is it this? <laughs> Behold, a man! I want to say it's this because of how the blood pattern on his uh, on his undershirt is. And what exactly is this supposed to be? This is the picture Miss Sky took. Take a good look at it. See if the piece of his vest was cut out? Yes. His shirt is showing underneath. It's hard to make out with all the blood on his vest, though. Exactly on my point. His chest is soaked with blood. That's only natural. His lungs, no doubt, were punctured. Blood poured out of his mouth. Yeah. That piece of cloth... Wait. There's no blood on it. Oh, fucking... Ah, oh, I... I missed it. Oh, I, I, there was a there was a look at this photograph. Every time I do it, it makes ah, oh, I completely missed that. Oh, how many have I missed? Fuck. Oh no. Shit. All right, whatever. Since I'm this guy's fingerprints are on this cloth, there's no doubt that she shoved the prosecutor aside. However, Mr. Marshall was not impaled on the sword at that time. No, this is nonsense. Now then, Chief Gantz, let me ask you something. Excuse me. Prosecutor Marshall was not impaled when he shoved aside. Most likely hit on his, his, his head on the ground and was knocked out. If so, then tell me, who could it have been? Who could have arrived at the scene before Miss Lannis guy? Picked up the unconscious prosecutor and impaled him on the other sword. Then, to make it look like Emily was responsible for the prosecutor's death, said person proceeded to write her name on the jar with the victim's blood. Cat's about to pull out a ketchup bottle. <laughs> I don't think they. The, uh, I don't think they, that they broke on purpose to leave behind a clue. I cannot read Jar Pro properly anymore after, you know, Yondev. And to ma and make Lana believe her sister did it. Remember what you admitted only moments ago? That you personally cut out this bloodless piece of cloth uh, from, the vic from the victim's vest. Ironic, isn't it? The, the very act of creating assurance, you prove that you were the actual murderer. Ah! It's finally all over. Ho <laughs> oh, that was close, Rido. You almost had me. What? Sorry, but you'll have to do better than that. I refute your allegations. What do you mean you refute his allegations? You see, that piece of cloth is illegal evidence. Order, order. What nonsense is this? Illegal evidence can help be used to convict a suspect. Remember, Aji? Well, there's an old writer here concealed that piece of cloth. Let me check something. Beat ass, eat glass. <laughs> A little writer here concealed that piece of cloth. So then, what's your excuse, Rido? You do have some conclusive evidence, don't you? Your Honor, I don't have any evidence I can present at this time. Point in time. What he said at this point in time. So, well, that's true. The defense did refuse to present evidence. At that moment, that piece of cloth ceased to be ceased to be legal evidence. But that's not fair. Ho 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 ho. Did you actually think you could best me in court?
Looks like you're on the last laps on you, son. I, I consented the evidence. It's okay, right? I'm afraid Miss Gant's claim, claim is legally correct. Didn't he also, like, admit to it? I think? Yeah? Well, Mr. Edgeworth? True. Illegal evidence cannot be used to convict a person. Assuming, of course, that the evidence is indeed illegal. Huh? Well, Mr. Wright? It seems at last. It's time to reveal my, fi my plan has finally arrived. Mr. Wright, do you admit to it? That you purposefully and illegally conceal this piece of cloth. What I did was not illegal. I admit I refused to present it at one point. <laughs> so the evidence is illegal. No, it isn't, Mr. Gant. Huh? It's not that I didn't present evidence then. It's that I couldn't. What do you mean you couldn't? There are certain procedures involved in presenting evidence. No, Edgy, don't listen to his lies. He's nothing but a coward. You can't really believe. There's only one issue left to be resolved in this trial. Is this evidence legal or not? The phrasing throws me off, yeah. Very well, let us settle this once and for all. Although you refuse to present evidence, if you can pro prove your co uh, conduct was not in violation of the law, then do so now. And it was the book who did it! This is my proof, Your Honor. Evidence law. What's this? I've done my homework too, Chief. Indeed, Emma Sky's fingerprints were on this piece of cloth. A <laughs> fist fight. However... At that point in time, this was merely a piece of cloth, nothing more. What? You see, it's written right here in this book. The second rule of evidence law. Rule number one, no evidence should be shown without the approval of the police department. I found this piece of evidence myself, inside your safe. It goes without saying, I did not have approval from the police department. Rule number two, unregistered evidence presented must be relevant to the case on trial. And here's the crux of the matter. You see, at that time it was impossible for me to prove the relevance between the cloth and the SL9 incident. What? What kind of nonsense is this? You want relevancy? Just take one look at this picture and... Sorry, but can you recall, when was that picture presented? That was shown only a few moments ago. No. He's right. At the beginning of today's trial, piece of cloth was still meaningless. The person who gave it value as evidence was you, Damon Gant. You yourself confessed to a certain truth. Let me verify this once more. On the day of the crime, you personally cut out this piece of the victim's vest. Oh yes. No. It was then that you approved of this cloth. As conclusive evidence. Yes, you, the chief of police, personally approved this cloth. The only person who could have cut this from the victim's vest is the one who stood before the prosecutor marshal in his final moments. In other words, the real murderer. And there's only one person who that could be. Damon Gant, the killer was you. Mm -mm. I'm not laughing. Dude's finally lost his cracker. <laughs> I knew I should have gotten rid of him. That good-for-nothing scum. For two years, he's been snooping around the department, trying to get something on me. Crimes are being committed every day, yet he insisted on hounding me. Well, your crime wasn't exactly petty. He wanted to reinvestigate the case. 
He recruited Angel Star, convinced Bruce Goodman. Detective Goodman. Yeah, that's right. If the evidence is transferred, I'll lose my only chance to find out the truth. Please, you've got to help me. Goodman turned him down, as he ought to. Still, Jake Marshall didn't know when to quit. He stole Goodman's ID card and tried to take the evidence. Goodman came to me that, meet, that day. He wanted to file a lost item report. I went with him to the evidence room, then all of a sudden he decided to speak out. What are you talking about, Goodman? Can you please reopen the investigation, Chief? You can't transfer the evidence out. There are too many questions left unanswered. He, he opened his evidence locker. And as he was taking out the evidence, he said, It's not too late. I'm going to hand this all over to Marshall. Well, to be honest, I was a bit taken aback by his words. I had a bad feeling about when he came to see me, but I never thought he'd bring up SL9. That's when I saw it, that accursed knife. I couldn't, I couldn't just pull it out. Doing so would have only led more blood, making it near impossible to hide your crime. Even so, the blood was just pouring out. I didn't know who might stumble in, so I heard to wipe it up. I was worrying so much about the floor I didn't realize my fatal mistake. The bloody handprints. Detective Gumshoe's Locker. I used to be known as the Crime Computer. But everyone has to start somewhere, I guess. I was too nervous. I had no business doing any of it. Did you put the body in my car? I'm sorry, I couldn't think of any other way to move the body. I broke your trunk. What about the big deal? You make a lot more than us detectives ever will. Ugh. Leaving the prosecution's car aside. How? How could you get Miss Guy involved in all of this? Well, she has much to lose as, a, as if I didn't if the truth came out. So you took the evidence from Detective Goodman's locker? I felt bad for having to do it. I also didn't have time to pick and choose what to take. So, you left the jar fragments in the glove? Yeah. Looks like I was better off being an investigator of crimes than a committer. They all did their best to get in my way. I've got to hand it to them. They did their jobs well, much to my dismay. Fake evidence doesn't hold up very well upon close examination. You must have known that. Tell me, Worthy. Why do you stand in court? Me? You despise criminals. I can feel it. You and me, we're the same. We're cut from the same cloth. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. One day you'll understand. Oh, believe me, you will. Yeah, I, I know, I know. Believe me, you will. You're just one man. You'll see what it really takes to bring them down once you try to go at all. You're absolutely not sorry? Yeah, I know. Well, looks like it's time to say goodbye. Oh, uh, gee. What? Looks like we'll have to cancel that lunch date. Sorry, old friend. I'm sorry too, Damon Gant. I know you used to... I knew you as you used to be long ago. You were once a fine investigator and example to others on the force. I'm sorry to learn that you are no longer that person. Those days are gone now, Edgy. Thanks for all the memories, though. Don't worry, you'll be fine. Now you have Raido here. And Worthy. With these two around, you can't go wrong. In fact, I can hear them already. The melodious sounds of a new beginning.
There are two things I want you to understand. Yes? First, your sister never hurt anyone. Second, Damon Gant betrayed you from the beginning. The judge's new kids, yeah. You see, Miss Sky, you no longer have any reason to keep silence. You're right. When this trial is over, I'll tell everything. All that I've done these past two years. From the time I had Gant help me forge evidence up until today. So, it seems all the questions raised in this trial have been answered. I'm sorry, Miss Sky. I couldn't get you out of all your trouble. My, my. What high standards you have. For a rookie. I could see why Mia thought so highly of you. Who knows? A few years from now, you just might make it to the top. Hey, she actually smiled. I owe you my thanks, Mr. Wright. She actually does kind of look pleasant when she smiles. The, the artist who did this game did it really well. Miss Sky. And to you too, Mr. Edgeworth. You suffered every bit as much as I have over these past few days. Believe me, I know how much of an ordeal it's been for you. <laughs> it was nothing. Liar. I was worried that the pressure might break you. And yet, you rose it above, all, above it all to, and guided Mr. Wright to victory. You've done well, Mr. Edgeworth. Stop it. I only did my job. In light of this case, it seems a good self-examining is in order for all of us. Miss Sky. Yes, Your Honor. You are innocent of murder, however. Although the Chief blackmailed you, the, the fact is that you still act as his accomplice. A trial will be scheduled for these crimes at a later date. Yes, I understand, Your Honor. Is there something amusing about all of this? Why are you smiling? Stop smiling. No smiling in court. No happiness. Death to everyone. It's been a long time, Your Honor. A long time since I felt free of these heavy chains. Especially the, ju the judge who can't remember where he's put his dentures. <laughs> I need to re-examine myself, and my dentures. Well, this trial has gone on far too long already. Regarding the char charge of murder, this court finds a defendant, Miss Lana Sky. Fuck. Yes. Yeah, guilty. <laughs> Where are my fucking teeth? The judge, yeah. That has all the score is adjourned. Hell yeah, we did it. At long last, it's finally over. Oh. Uh, Emma. Why the long face? I'm sorry your sister didn't completely get completely off the hook. But at least she wasn't convicted for a murder she didn't commit. No, that's not it. Just now, after the trial ended, I can see why Mia Faye thought so highly of you. I owe you my thanks, Mr. Wright. And to you too, Mr. Edgeworth. You suffered every bit as much as I have over these past few days. Yay. <laughs> You've done well. You know, I did my best to, but Lana didn't say a single word to me. Hope I'm not into that fucking gumshoe. <laughs> fucking dumbass, I love him. <laughs> oh boy, I, I, I love him. I love this guy to bits. <laughs> Guess I am. I'll come back later. <laughs> uh, I, I love him. This is why he got fired. No, he got fired because he he breached. Uh, I think it was breach of trust or something like that. I can't remember what it was called. Detective Gumshoe, what is it? 
You're doing this on purpose, aren't you? Making a detective run around while on duty. But, I, okay. Let's stop it off, y'all. Call me here. I've seen happier people at funerals. Hey, lighten up, pals. I'm only kidding. Oh, are you here because of my sister again? Nope. Not this time. I came today because of you, pal. Me. That's right. I thought you'd like to see someone. Lana. Should you be doing this? She's still under arrest, you know. Well, I won't tell if you won't. I love him. Emma, I owe you an apology. It's okay, sis. Don't worry about it. That day two years ago. Was the first time in my life I ever panicked. Gumshoe is the real OG. I love him. I kind of want to add a, like a Gumshoe emote in 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 uh in Discord. He's like a puppy, yeah. All I could do was keep myself from screaming. All I could think about was keeping you from getting wrapped up in that mess. Sis. I asked Gant to help me cover up the truth. I thought I was doing it for your sake. But now, I realize I was wrong. You totally should, yeah. I still gotta get you that twerking emote too. Eventually. But now I realize I was wrong. I changed after that day. I had to. It was the only way I could make it through the past two years. I knew how much I was hurting you by distancing myself. But I couldn't bring myself to tell you what I did. I, I was scared. Scared that you look at me with those eyes of yours. I was scared of how you react if you knew. But since you were only doing it for me. No. Huh? I turned my back on you that day. <laughs> In hiding what I believe to be the truth, I was deceiving you. Sis. I'm such a fool. It took me all this time to realize it. I <laughs> did he run away. <laughs> oh shit, it's lawyer. <laughs> Emma, I'm so sorry. But sis, you don't have to apologize. I'm happy now. You're happy. Of course. You know, sis. I always knew that one day you'd come back. And now you have. Oh, Emma. Emma. Oh, that's a nice picture. No one can change the past. The only thing we can do is strive to make up for our mistakes. Why must we make up for our mistakes, you ask? Because in, do in so doing, we can find the way back to our rightful path. And it's from here that we can move on t to toward a brighter future. At least that's what I felt watching the two sisters make up. I have a good stream, I'll go watch show for a bit. Okie dokie. I'm about to end anyway soon, as soon as this game is done. And that I've showed the new schedule, or new, uh, new cycle. Mr. Wright, Mr. Gumshoe. Have a great final bye chat. Take care of Sawyer. Have a good one. Hope you enjoy your show. Me? Thank you both for all that you've done. I'm sure we'll meet again someday. Isn't that right, Edgeworth? Edgeworth. Stop hiding and come over here. Boy, isn't he a ball of joy. Or was he hiding? I just came to say congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Right, well, I'll be going now. Mr. Edgeworth, I hope you don't blame yourself for what happened. 
We were the ones who acted corruptly, not you. It's too late for me. No matter what anyone may say, I realize today that I can't correct my mistakes. Mr. Edgeworth. Not only that, but I don't even trust myself anymore. Chief Gantz was right. You despise criminals. I can feel it. You and me, we're the same. One day you'll understand. Oh, believe me, you will. Just where you're just one man. You'll see what it really takes to bring them down once you try to go it alone. I do despise criminals. I plan my I plan my to dedicate my entire life to fighting them. In order to fight crime on my own, I need a weapon. It's scary, but I've known that to be true for some quite some time now. But Edgeworth, who knows? Given enough time, I might have tried to pull something like Chief Gant did. That thought terrifies me. That's why I can't continue on a pro as a prosecutor. Edgeworth, don't you understand? Damon Gant and your mentor, Manfred von Karma, were both the best of the best when it came to fighting crime. But they both made the same mistake. You said in order to fight crime on my own, I need a weapon. That may be true. But think back to today's trial. You weren't alone. You were working together with Mr. Wright. And because of that partnership, you were able to present evidence that would otherwise have gone undiscovered. Edgy angst, yeah. Isn't that right, Mr. Wright? Huh? What? Uh, uh yeah. What is this, a pop quiz? Come on, Mr. Wright. Show him what Lana's talking about. Pat's for all. Something that neither Edgeworth nor I would have been able to find on her own. That's the picture I drew. Our counterattack began with this. You had one half of the evidence list, and I had the other. Apart, we wouldn't have been able to completely restore Emma's picture. That didn't just happen by chance, Mr. Edgeworth. It's time for me to go. Mr. Edgeworth. If you'll excuse me. There are still some loose ends that need wrapping up. Take care, Chief Prosecutor. Crap. Edgeworth, what will you do now? Well, whatever you do, just remember. You can let what happened kill the prosecutor in you, or you can let it help you grow. In the end, it's up to you. I know. It seems I owe you my thanks too, right? But what, I, what I face now is my problem. Edgeworth. I'll be waiting for you in court. Farewell. I better be going too. Okay, but I'll be I'll be by to visit soon. I just saw an Elohim somewhere. Oh, hello, Elohim. Good boy. Pet pet. Seem to be both a lot to learn, and catching up to do. Here, this is a little something for you. Scientific Investigation. It's the first book I ever bought. Study it well. Thanks, sis. I will. And so, another case came to a close. As for the sisters, I have faith. Faith that their lives have only just begun. 
And as for me, I think it's time I started on a new journey of my own. A journey to rediscover myself. Well, don't go trekking off just yet, pal. Huh? What is it, detective? There's just a little matter to be resolved about the chief prosecutor. You see, she isn't supposed to be out of jail like this. But I thought she said it was okay. Yeah, well, it may be okay with me, but the folks at the prison are a different story. Huh? Basically, I had to bribe a guard in order to sneak around for 30 minutes. Believe me, it wasn't cheap either. Huh? Way to go, detective. I didn't know you had a wild side. Yeah, well, haha. <laughs> you see, Mr. Right here's the one who will be footing the bill. I love you, Gumshoe. I love you so much. Huh? <laughs> huh? What, do you think I could afford it with my salary? You gotta be killing me, pal. Huh? 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 Thank you, Mr. Right. You're the best. Why is it? I suddenly feel like I want to scream. Hey, I got an idea. Why don't we all go pay it off together? Yeah, that's a great idea. Come on, guys. Let's go. Objection! Hell yeah. I think it was a good, like, final... final chapter of the... of the thing. Oh. I arranged for a friend of mine in Europe to take care of Emma. I hope she'll be pleased to study under a top coroner. As for me, this affair has pretty much ended my days at, his, as, at the prosecutor's office. Still, I'll manage to find my way back to the field somehow. Then, I'll be able to investigate crimes together with Emma. But in all seriousness, I really fucking love this game. I just gotta do something quickly. Yikes, I thought I was a goner for a moment there. In the end, though, they overlooked my unauthor unauthorized investigation at the chief's office. If we penalize you anymore, it'd be worse than firing you. Yep, that's what they said. Just goes to show, you can't shake me off that easily. It was a great game. I, I, I heavily enjoyed it. My new mission is to, to guard the main entrance and take care of Billy. Can you believe it? I've been demoted to a security guard. My partner's keeping an eye on the entrance for me today. I'll show them, though. Sometime, someday I'm going to make a detective. Yes, sir. Then I can just be like that dick gumshoe. Aww. Mika looks up to him. Oh, thank you for posting the Discord and the YouTube. Uh, just as a heads up, uh, before we, uh, bro, uh, let's, let's wait till the credits end and then I got, why well, I got something to show you guys. Why is that thing still there? Shit. What is it? Can't you see him having me a showdown with a steak lunch partner? Miss Star managed to sneak this into me. She's seen one of the guards, it seems. Well, cowboy, it looks like you did it. You even gave Bambina a backer smile. Can you make sure Billy and the gang gets the get their water? Looks like we won't be seeing each other for a while. As a farewell gift, I put a new meal on the menu. The right way lunch. Nice. The top layer tastes as bitter as defeat, but the bottom layer is as sweet as victory. Kids seem to dig about the turnabout theme. It's a hot seller around exam time. Just make sure not to eat it backwards.
Where the, was the badger made to cover up the jar of drink? I think so. I'll never forget what that young defense lawyer said at the trial. Let's see, what was his name again? Mr. Left? Anyway, he said he'd been doing some, uh, doing some, anyway, I don't know. Anyway, I gotta get to another trial, so I better be, huh? Oh no, I forgot my gavel. Sorry, gotta go. Oh, holy shit, we actually get to see the chair. Oh, so, sometimes I do miss hearing in your, in your objections. Still, I can't go back until I'm a full-fledged spirit medium. Mystic Maya, afternoon training is about to begin. Coming. You see now, yeah. All right, I think I got everything set up. How long are the credits? <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth. Uh, Mr. Edgeworth? I brought you your tea. What's going on? Oh fuck, did he actually put in his resignation? I wonder how the next games are gonna go. Thanks for coming to see me off. I can't believe I'm going to Europe. Thank you, Mr. Wright. Thank you so much for everything. I'm a little sad, but I'll be all right. Whenever I want to see Lana, all I have to do is open this book. Oh. That's adorable. Hell yeah. That's so fucking good. Oh, do I have to... Fuck, I thought I was gonna do the ba 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 ba. Anyhow. So, I got some exciting news. I got the next games and lineup. So, I did end up showing this image uh, on my Twitter and my Discord. So, are you guys ready to see what the next two games are? I, I, I have not had anybody guess them yet, but uh, we, we, we have two new games that are in circulation because I've really enjoyed Ace Attorney and I really enjoyed West of Loathing, but there was a fuck ton of talking in them, and my, on all this thing, my throat kind of took a, a little bit of damaging because I'm not used to speaking so much, but it is whatever. As the new games, Metal Gear Solid 3 and Damon X Machina. I'm really excited for this. <laughs> it might be a little bit underwhelming. Uh, I know people don't recognize Damon X Machina, but it is a very visually entertaining game. Uh, all, all about like mechs and whatnot. I know a lot of people are so into uh, Metal Gear Solid 3. Uh, I tried. To, I tried to like. I tried to see like who. Uh, 
if I could just start midway through the series. And I and people told me, oh yeah, you could start with uh, MGS3. So that's what we're gonna be doing. But anyways. So yeah, that's 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 gonna be the two. Uh, Metal Gear Solid Three, Damon X Machina. Um, I don't know which one I'm gonna start with first. I have managed to get Metal Gear Solid Three to work, and Damon X Machina is on the Switch. Uh, so we'll just have to see about that one. Anyhow, uh, let's find somebody to raid. Balls. <laughs> It seems like, on my end, the only person who is online is um, uh, Pipetron. Sure, we can raid a Philip. All right, let's let's raid a Philip Tron. Anyways, I hope everybody had a good time. I I, I will be posting the spot to the to the uh, to the the channel, reorganizing all the the playlist, and then yeah, raid message. Oh yeah, there's the Discord and the VOD channel if anybody's interested. Um, the raid message will be. Objection, you have been guilty, found guilty of being raided. Uh, if you don't have the gun emote, use whatever you got. And I hope everybody uh, has a good time. Oh, and yeah, thank you for dropping the Skybreakers uh, link. Uh, I might be working a little bit on that tomorrow. We'll have to see. Um, I gotta do some research. Especially with the, the survey that's gone out. But, it's whatever. Also, Elohim is rubbing against my leg, so I think he wants to... to uh, say goodbye. Anyways, uh, take care, everyone.